Lewandowski. He's taking on the German MTT crusher Fedor Holes. Should be a hell of a match. 100-200 action. My name is Mike Brady. I'm the VP of Upswing Poker. I'll be calling the play-by-play -play today. And I'm joined by the one and only Douglas Polk. How you doing, Doug? I'm good. Thank you for having me here on my own channel. Uh, I'm glad to be casting today, Mike. You know, honestly, when I was looking at the streams and before... Sudden, I cannot hear you. <laughs> hello, testing. Can. Testing. Can you hear me? Hello? I don't think anything changed on my end, so... Anyway, welcome to the stream, guys. Should be a fun one today. When I was playing in the challenge and watching some of the commentary, I thought to myself, it'd be nice to get to commentate because... No, no offense to our many various people that came in and commentated, and some people were pretty sharp, um, some people not as much. It's nice to have someone in the booth that really knows what's going on, and after six months of Heads Up No Limit and a career of playing, and I can say that I'm one of those people. So we're going to have Mike doing the play-by-play. -play. I think Mike does a phenomenal job with that. And I'm going to be adding a little bit of color so you guys can kind of understand what's happening today. Hopefully it should be a fun one. Is Mike back? No. Well, okay, maybe I'm just talking to myself then. Or not. It's hard to tell. Yeah, I think we're live. <laughs> well, I, I, they can hear me, but I can't hear you. That's the issue happening here. Ah, found it. Found it. We're good. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Well, good, good, to, uh, good to be back. I missed you, chat. It was, uh, it was a long time to be away from y'all. You know, I just love having thousands of people to correct my every word. Uh, and uh, it's it's good to have you back in my corner here. As you can see, we don't have the heads up action up on the screen yet. We have an... Oh, I mean, it only came out two days ago, but already an infamous hand of poker played on High Stakes Poker uh, a few months ago, but it aired two days ago on Poker Go. So, we are... No way. Are they saying we can't hear him now? Are you sure? <laughs> well, today, unfortunately, I'm the tech guy, so that's that's what kind of throws it off. Yeah, <laughs> I got it. I got it. Can they hear me now? Yeah, now they can. Sorry about that, guys. I figured it out. There are two of my headphones in the in the uh, settings. Very confusing, but we should be good now. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. So. We do have this now infamous hand up on your screen while we're waiting for the action to begin over on GG Poker. I guess they're playing on a delay, which is understandable since whole cards are being shown. So we're just going to have a little pregame show for you here. Talk about, I figured we'll start by talking about this, uh, this hand that is likely on your mind, especially if you've seen it. If you haven't, I'll recap the action for you real quick. And if you don't want a spoiler to this epic hand, if you were like planning to watch this episode of High Stakes Poker from Wednesday, mute right now, and then you won't hear what happens. And then when the screen changes, you'll know to, you know, tune back in. So the way this hand went, Helmuth opens from like middle position uh, to 1100. They're playing, you're playing 200, 400, right, Doug? Uh, I think 200, 400 with, with an ante of some sort. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Helmuth opens with the queen 10 off from like roughly low jack, high jack or so two two or three off the button. James board calls on the button and then Doug, uh, completes in the big blind with the 10, seven offsuit. The flop is a dream for Helmuth and a nightmare for Doug. They both flop a straight on Jack nine, eight with two spades. So very draw heavy board as well. Doug checks it over to Phil as he should with all of his hands and Phil decides to get trappy with the nuts, as he often does. Gets to Borg, Borg, or Borg, who has pocket twos, decides to throw out a little wager on this board. Twos without a spade, I believe, as well. Pretty ambitious bet from him. Gets back to Doug, who then check raises to 7k. And then it gets to Helmuth, who jams it in for 97.2k total, as you can see on your screen. So Doug had to, obviously James Borg folded the twos, and Doug had to call 90k to win 110 or so. So that's the spot he got into. Doug, do you want to uh, talk about what you, what was going through your mind here? For sure. Briefly to talk about the button play with twos. It's possible that it's better to bet without a spid mm. than with a spid. Interesting. Well, So first off, 
the deuce the, the two of spades isn't that relevant in terms of what hands you block you block some big blind f flush draws that will float um so it makes it a little bit better but it's also a much worse hand versus check raise because then you just have the bet fold either way deuces will end up in bet ranges quite often on these boards so his bet's probably fine um i mean i don't know how often he's betting but it's it can't be that bad i don't think um but anyway when i have 10 7 here on the flop it's a spot you're going to want to mainly check raise i think you can mix in some check call i think i lean more towards check calling with the spade 10 sevens but i think i'd mainly check raise all of them something around two-thirds of the time or so and then we're also going to be mainly check raising queen 10. Uh, I think three-way, we're going to be trapping it a bit less. So we're going to be check raising queen 10, I would say 75, 80, 85% of the time. I'm not sure exactly what I would be doing, but we'd mix in a few check calls. I think we'd be a little more likely to check call with a hand such as queen 10 of spades. Um, although the suited varieties of queen 10 will be mixing in pre-flop three bets. So um, the main takeaway here is we're going to have a lot of queen 10. We're going to have um, a lot of 10, seven, of course, as well. Um, but Button's also going to have Queen-10, and we're going to have a bunch of different hands that want to check raise. Anyway, we check raise 10-7 over to Phil. He just jams. It's just a terrible play. There, there's no... It's just it's just extremely bad. Because on a board such as this one, you're going to have every Queen-10 in the big one other than Queen-10 suited. So I have tons of Queen-10, and they're mainly raising the flop. So I, have just, I just have tons of Queen-10, basically. And... Um, the button's also going to have tons of queen 10 in an anti game versus a 2.75x. He's definitely going to be playing suited queen 10, and then he's probably even supposed to play some offsuit queen 10. Knowing this player, I think he'd play almost all of his queen 10. So Phil is just ripping 100k into two guys that both have almost all their queen 10s. So it's just a horrific play. You know, you think about the play where, you know, how it's a standard thing in poker to overbet when your opponent doesn't have many strong hands. This is the opposite of that. This is overbetting in the two guys that have the nuts a ton. Okay, so <laughs> so the the play itself is just is just very bad. If he has queen 10, he gets everything else to fold. If he has a bluff, then they have way more queen 10. It's just not it's just not a good spot basically. Anyway, Phil does jam. Button folds his twos and then it's back on me. So now I have to think about it like this. He's risking 100 to win 11 or 12 or whatever is in the middle. So, yeah, and Brady, you might want to mute your mic when you stop talking. I actually, I always just press the mute button just so that I won't be, like, coughing or typing or whatever. Um, but anyway, so basically, basically, back to me. And in this spot, I'm going to have Queen 10 a little more than 10-7, I think. Uh, I forget if I was mixing some pre or not, but I don't think it's super relevant. And then I'm a little more likely to raise Queen 10 than 10-7 on the flop. So I'm a bit more weighted towards Queen 10 than 10-7 here on the flop raise. After that, I have to think, okay, well, how often do I have to call? And I think between me and the button, we're both going to have queen 10 a lot, and those are all obviously calls. Those are the nuts. So he's risking 100 to win 12. We only need to defend here. Minimum defense frequency is going to be something around 12, 13, 14% or whatever it is based on the pot size. So that means I only have to call 7 or 8%, and the button only has to call 7 or 8%. And I want to say that 15 or 20% of my range is queen 10 here. So I don't even think this is an exploit. I just think this is just a straight up fold. I don't think this is a, I mean, I was on the fence a little bit. And then when he told me blockers, I thought, okay. When Phil Helmy tells you he's got the blockers, I think you can lay it down. But I just don't think that in theory you call outside of queen 10 here. Because it's a spot where both players have so many straights that it's just not it's just your hand's just not that good relative to the amount of money being wagered here and how strong both of these both um, myself and the buttons range can be to have queen 10 in, in this spot so phil just phil's just play is just so bad that i think you only call with the nuts are better or the nuts yeah it's tough to have better than the nuts but yeah that i mean that makes a lot of sense we we had some people asking in chat like was that an exploited to fold was that a gto fold people really like to you know label things like that and it's it's interesting to hear that you actually think it's just in theory the the price you're getting uh, and and like how the the ranges he's shoving into it really is like a full a fold with well, the second nuts probably theoretically correct even you know in in like gto land or whatever 
I mean, the bottom line is Phil Hellmuth's play is so bad here that everything other than the nuts has to fold. And he has the nuts. So he's just getting me off every other piece of equity. It just it, it just doesn't it just doesn't make any sense, basically. It's a it's just nonsense. It really does it, it really does it's reminiscent of like playing in, you know, uh a one two game or, or something like that, and you have someone who has a really strong hand and they like overshove and it makes absolutely no sense and they they do it for like an absurd amount. You know, kind of like something you see low stakes inexperienced players do, where they're sort of basically just afraid of playing later streets. I'm not saying that's what Phil was thinking here, but it's very reminiscent of that type of, of thinking that you well, see Phil... from certain people. Yeah, Phil is used to playing in very soft games where you just jam here and people just call you with whatevs and you stack somebody. But versus good people, it's not going to work. And this is a spot where both players have tons of combos with the nuts. I'm not sure how in tune with combos Phil is. But both players have tons of the nuts. So it's just not... You just can't jam here. You basically just can't. If you're buffing, you get owned, and if you're value betting, you get everything to fold. It's just a, it's just a t truly terrible play. I, I don't think, I actually think that my hand is just kind of standard. I think that the notable hand here is Phil Helmuth's, which is just, which is just, he he figured out a way to, to never make money. I mean, of course he takes the pot down, but additional bets. I don't think you. I think, I mean, if I had ten seven of spades, I'd have to call. Sure. Unless I check. I mean, if I check raise that, so he definitely owns me there, but. It's just it's just a horrible horrible play. I, I I can't. There's no there's no redeeming qualities. It's good against people. If you think someone is a massive idiot, then we'll just call with two pair here. Maybe it's fine as an exploit. But if you're playing someone that you even remotely respect as being somewhat capable of being a thinking person or able to play cards on at a table, it's just a terrible play. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, to, in uh, in Phil Hummel, I'm insulted. I'm insulted. He did this versus me, Mike. I'm insulted. <laughs> it's an insultingly well, bad play. To be fair, he also did it against James Board. James Board might have had like a set of eights there and just like snap called off. So it, it, maybe there are well, some uh, there are some that avenues be, that work out for him. But yeah, I see what you're saying. That, that can be more reasonable because if he thinks that so if James Board calls, if I have Queen Ten, I have to call as well, and then he's actually doing fine. In fact, he, he's probably ahead. He's more likely to pair the board, and then so if we both have queen ten, it's a good spot for him. And then I also might be having, I might have to be, I might be priced in having to call with some draws. If I had a hand such as king ten of spades, or ace ten of spades, or king queen of spades, I'm probably going to have to call if it goes call call, because I'm just getting three and a half to one, or three point three to one. So I'm probably going to have to call. So him calling with set of eights there is actually. A bit better, but yeah, he did do it against against board. This is just classic Phil. I'm setting you up to get trapped. I'm setting you up to get trapped. Boom, trapped, all in, and then and then just hope that someone donks it up and calls you, basically. Yeah, I mean, I, I, this is kind of uh, this is not really how you think about poker, but I am curious. Did in any way did the fact that he played that like king's hand earlier in the session? so passively like so it was kind of top of mind how trappy and odd phil helmuth is for those who didn't see the hand helmuth like limp calls with kings versus a player who's very loose preflop and then check folds to a second bet on the turn granted an ace high board but but he you know he basically limp called kings and then folded to a turn bet it's a very weak line um yeah what do you to be honest man i wasn't even really paying attention to the hands that were happening or <laughs> such uh, you know i i, I don't my opinion of Phil Helmuth isn't going to change based on a hand he just played. I, he, he, you know. It, oh right, yeah. I'm. It's yeah, more yeah. so. It's more so just is does because Helmuth is just such a no. presence with that stuff. Like he, he makes it so obvious, like how he thinks. Like it, it's hard. I mean, I've been been at his table a couple of times. It's just hard to for. It's hard to forget anything about Phil Helmuth because he's just constantly reminding you. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was kind of wondering if it was top of mind for that reason. But like I said, that's not really how you approach poker in general. So I'm not surprised to hear no. I, 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 I'm just not that interested in how my opponents are playing because I'm just here to play well and win money, you know? It's, it's easier to not care about what they're doing. Just play your game and just play optimal. And it's funny seeing people, oh man, sick exploit, but it wasn't. I just, you know, if it was close, basically, it's the way I use reads is if I have a close decision, I lean towards one. But I just don't think that this is even... I just think that this has to be a fold. And if and if Phil has a jam, if Phil's just jamming it in here with a set of eights, well then he blocks my two pairs that check raise fold, so I have less of those. And then 
yes, he will own me with 10-7, but then he gets stacked when I have queen 10. Or the button has queen 10. So this is just this is just so bad. Um, it's just it's just truly horrific. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm I have... sure I'm a good fold. I, I I'm I'm happy I folded. And the the bigger element here, I think if this was online, I could have just folded and moved on. But the the bigger element here is you're playing on high stakes poker, which is a very popular TV show. And I didn't play very long. I and mean, this is my only really big hand that I played. And it's going to be a hugely talked about hand. And so you're sitting there thinking, and a big part of it is, if I fold here and he has whatever that isn't queen 10, you're going to look so bad. That's the main, that's the, it, it's, it's, I, I just, I, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's more of the spot on TV than it is the spot itself, because I think the spot itself is just a fold. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Do you have any, uh, did you have any thoughts at the time or, or po you know, post-mortem about the table talk that was sort of happening during this hand? Because there was some pretty, I mean, I, I don't even think it's arguable. It, it's just straight up out of line table talk happening on the other end of the table. I, maybe they weren't saying it so they could hear it, so you could hear it. I, you know, I wasn't there. Yeah, what are your thoughts? Well, no, I mean, it was, it was pretty loud. I, here's my take on that. First off, I've been the guy talking in a, in a bigger hand before, and sometimes you just don't realize, and I, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? It, it, well, but so you, first you, off, I don't so, think you're usually talking about the hand. I don't think you're like, it's got to be queen 10. <laughs> well, but also these guys are fucking dogs. Do you think I really care what they're saying? You know what I'm saying? No offense to those guys, but I don't care what some fish thinks about my hand or Phil's hand is. Oh no, I'm going to get a read from board. Board's <laughs> opinion is Phil has a certain hand. Who right. fucking cares? Right. I don't care what these guys are saying. There's no chance that the, what they say has any impact unless they're saying what they had and stuff in which case that's totally out of line you can't say your cards but his opinion on what he thinks phil helmuth has who, who cares and, and, and also just to say if i felt that it was impacting my decision or not letting me think i would have said hey guys shut the fuck up you know what i'm saying i would have i would have done something but i i i didn't feel i'm not saying that what they did what what they did was 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 out of line a bit but not so much to where I felt it, it hindered my ability to think about the hand, because if it had, I would have said something. It's the main takeaway. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. My bigger problem with the table, frankly, was all of the bitching about there being pros there. Oh my god, there's these pros at the table. Dude, you're playing high-stakes fucking poker. Grow up, man. Who was complaining this, about that? I didn't catch that. Oh, I didn't know if that made the cut or not. But uh, James Board was complaining about all the pros at the table. And, um, you know, it's just, I, I played on the show for Maury. Maury said, Doug, I'd really like you to play. And I said, fine, I'll play a session. And I get there. Everyone's complaining. Phil, Hy Phil Ivy bails. Tom Dwan's out of there quick, too. The fish are complaining about the pros. Helmut's netting it up. Everyone's trying to get an edge. Ticky-tack things all over the place. People complaining. It just, it's just a horrible fucking vibe. It's not like back in the day when it was... You watch it and it was in a back room and the pros sucked and the fish sucked and there's stacks of cash and it had a cozy atmosphere. This is a production set with people complaining and everyone trying to get an edge. I don't know. I just, it, it felt shitty. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm not, not to spoil the magic for people, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I have to say, I think you, you ended up doing Maury a big favor because you kind of saved this episode, I would say. Like it wasn't a particularly compelling episode I mean, until, until this hand. So it worked Maury, out good. Maury's the man. He he's the guy behind High Six Poker. He does a bunch of stuff with Poker Go. I've I've got a good relationship with him. He's a really nice dude. He he helped set up the challenge with me and Negranu. He he's just he's just a great dude. I I think everyone in the scene loves Maury. So when he when he's saying Doug, you need to play this, you feel like okay, I'll play. Uh, I'd also wired money over to Arya to play Negranu. So you know, I already ha I had the money. I was there. Was, fuck it. Just yeah, session. Sure. How long did you play for? Like three hours or something? I'm not. I'm not sure. Something around that, and then I got kicked out. They just wanted enough time so they could put me in the tagline. You know, exactly. Doug's here. Yeah, and they got your. Just they got your. Good, they got your good fold. So like, all right, let's give. My fold. Let's, let's give twenty percent of one of our episodes to that, and then we can kick them off. And they, they, exactly. they did exactly that. For those just tuning in, welcome. Uh, we are still uh -oh. waiting on the action to begin between Fedor Holes and Victor Malinowski, aka Limitless. Uh, should be starting up shortly, I imagine. They were supposed to be starting play at 10, I believe. And there's going to be a delay with regards to 
uh, being able to view the tables. So we're just waiting on that to sort of, you know, shake out. And then we're going to uh, bring the tables up and start sweating the action. The initial plan was just to pull up the tables. Well, table, because I, there's, I heard rumblings that this might be a one-tabling affair, in which case there's going to be a lot of downtime today. But... Assuming that's the case, uh, we were initially planning to just pull up the table on GG Poker, talk about cards down action, basically. But, unfortunately, GG has sort of locked the table. You can't open it, so we will be just using GG's stream. This is going to be a one-time stream for us today, anyway. We might cover it once or twice next week, but more than likely, this is going to be it. And it looks like the action has started, so let's, uh, let's pull up that table. Nice, bring, man. Looking forward to it. Bring it up right now, and let's get flying. I want to talk about the match here while you pull that up. So these guys, uh, obviously both professional poker players, even if they say they're retired. I know a little <laughs> bit about that. Uh, Limitless has been battling tons of heads-up regs for a while now, so this guy has played a lot of heads-up poker. He's played a lot of people that I know, so I'm pretty familiar with this game. And then Fedor uh, also splashes around from time to time. He's played some different regs, so somewhat familiar with... Uh, it's going to be one table length today, huh? Unfortunately, yeah. In which case, by the way, we were, you know, we were initially thinking, oh, this will just be like two, three hours if they're playing 400 hands. Uh, if we want to cut this thing early, I'm okay with that, personally. Yeah. Can always uh, kick, kick, well, it, kick it over to Joey in the GG stream. We're just going to, you know, this is a win-win for everyone. Yeah, GG, sure. Poker, GG Poker is getting more eyes on this match on their, you know, on their software with a lot of our, our upswing exclusive audience and stuff like that. And, you know, we want to give you guys some Doug commentary on some heads up. We know you're probably itching for it. So this is what we're going to do. We might not do the whole thing today. Uh, we might might kick it over to them. This is kind of an interesting river spot. Uh, Fader could definitely consider bet three bet. So open call, check down to river, Fader min bets. On that, last, uh, on, does, that, on that last hand? On this hand right now. I'm watching. Oh, where Sorry, where, where are you watching? Let me, let me ref I'm on their YouTube. Let me refresh it. So then... Uh... We could be, we could be in sync. Oh yeah, here we go. We're I was good. watching. No, you're you're good. I was just like ten seconds behind you. So, uh, thank you, thank you for bearing with us, ladies and gents. <clears throat> Where should I watch, Mike? Um, I would say on what, on the what, what? Uh, on the GG stream. You're good. Okay. So yeah, you so were you we were saying be... it it could go bet three bet from uh from Victor on the on the river or was that on fade from Fedor's end? Yeah. So basically. Uh, when you river pairs and you bet and you get raised, those are typically good bet three bet candidates. And with Jack nine on that board, he also blocks 10 nine. Uh, so there's some reasonable merit there, but um, board's not up anymore. So we should, we should probably just move on. But yeah, that, that was a spot where he could have considered getting splashy out of the gate. Maybe he's going to be playing a little bit more close to the vest. And it looks like they don't have auto reload on. I kind of hope that that gets fixed. Yeah, no kidding. They, they, I think they. This is their first stream too, so uh, you know, get ironing out the kinks, if you will. And it's nice that right. we get. It's nice that we get to see Fedor and Victor's face here. They, they have them labeled wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. So okay, this should be good. Looking by the way, to get into the mix. By the way, uh, let's get our predictions in. If you're on YouTube, drop a one in the chat. If you've got Victor today. Drop a two in the chat if you've got Fedor. If you're on Twitch, you can bet your very valuable and important channel points on this. Wager them, and maybe you'll win more, and then you could do something with them. Mike, I, you know, I'm wondering, can we? is it possible we could get a few more people's face on the screen? Because right now, I just don't know if we have enough faces. Could you maybe get something in the top right? That would be nice. Maybe something right in the middle of the felt could be good. Yeah, maybe covering the flop, just a nice, like... Yeah, uh, and I, another because it's really putting it's really putting the face and face off today. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. F Fedor's Fedor and Victor's face is on the screen three times each. How amazing is that? <laughs> can we can we just get a few more faces? It would be it'd be perfect. <laughs> also, can we can we get a little less of the table? Right, I, I I'm distracted from these beautiful men by this table in the middle. Let's let's get rid of let's get rid of the. The table a bit you know maybe maybe blow those icons up and also i think it's a nice touch to have the webcam smaller than the still high def images of them on the table that's another nice touch here for the stream constructive criticism here from the upswing stream over to the gg stream it's all love guys it's all love 
I think I'm going to watch on the Russian stream because it's... Oh, actually, no, I should watch the other one because it'll run the same thing. Okay. All right. Let's settle in. We've actually it's got like, eight, eight total faces on the screen. That's pretty fantastic, including their avatars. I'm telling you, we just need a couple more. There, let's get this. Let's get, let's do this. Let's get Doug's face somewhere as well. There you go. All right. So Victor right open, opens the queen six. Fedor calls queen six suited. Standard from both. Um, check. Victor goes for the one third pot bet with queen six. Diamond here is a nice card to have. Um, it's going to block a lot of the continue range. The queen x with the queen diamond's hands are got the float. The small bet can't float. So I really like this bet with this hand. Usually you're going to bet queen three, queen four more. Queen six, queen seven might be a bit more likely to check. Um, Victor does decide to check the turn. I think that's okay. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing this be a low frequency uh, turn bet. Not having a spade is good. You unblock. Uh, flopped back to flush. I was like, let me say, for example, queen six of spades. You unblock that by having a uh, heart. Basically, betting the turn with a spade is the worst card to have. Hearts and clubs are both uh, slightly positive, and then a diamond, of course, much better. So this hand definitely qualifies a pretty reasonable uh, bet, too. Uh, Fader has a clear bet river. He decides to go for a roughly 80% pot size. I'm trying to think about how I feel about that. I think it's okay. Um, I do think with the flush completes, you're going to want to have some over bets there. But usually you want to have diamond hands. Um, so I think I actually prefer more of a block bet size, something around one third pot or so, something where he's dropping, he can have ace four, ace three, something a bit thinner for value. Um, but his size is fine too. It really kind of depends on how Fader wants to play it, what size he wants to split between. He can use either um, really big and um, a small and like a block size. He could use um, a size like he did and um, more of a block size. Um, or he could just use the, the larger size like he did, but uh, usually you want to have a smaller size as well. And he's already shown that he had a min bet on one of the rivers, so um, we're getting a bit of a, a look into the way that he's going to approach these hands, but, you know, he's probably not structuring it too specifically. He's probably doing a lot of, um, you know, just kind of doing a bit of guessing and, and mixing it up. So I wouldn't expect to see some really standardized sizes in these spots because it's tough to figure out. Actually, let me jump into the 10 really quick, too. So I think open jack 10, I assume three bet call. Queen jack 9, Fedor checks, uh, Victor checks. Uh, Victor should be betting the flop. Um, a reasonable frequency is caught 40% or so. Turn queen. Fedor has just a terrible bluff candidate. Um, check. And then once again, Victor should bet here occasionally, but just as I check it back, I'm fine with the line from both. River, I think Fedor is going to have a pretty standard-ish bluff. Um, you're not going to have the... Um, well, some of the lower hands uh, might have paired the eight or, or, or paired the nine. You will have a bunch of 10x hands. Um, so this is a spot where you're going to want to bluff with some of your low card hands. It's worth saying that it depends on the way that Fedor, he does it bluff and Victor calls with the straight, um, which I think is fine to not raise there. Uh, you can have some boats and of course Fedor can have boats too. Um, but anyway, the point I was going to make is um, maybe, maybe raising the river you should mixed raise, but that's not the point. The point I'm going to make is if Fader is three betting lots of low suited hands as bluff candidates, you could reach a point where you don't want to bluff with some of those uh, seven four spades type holdings. Um, but um, certainly fine to at least mix in uh, a frequency of bluffing those. And I would expect to see Fader bluff those maybe a little bit more often than he should, given the uh, type of poker that I've seen from Fader in the past. And, uh, you know, he's a bit splashy, right? So I think that kind of makes sense with his image. And, um, yeah, it's an interesting hand. Well, if that is a preview of the insights you guys are in store, or you've got in store for you today, uh, you should be pretty damn excited. That was some uh, top-notch heads-up info right off the bat from Doug. And he's going to keep bringing it, I imagine. I don't think he's planning on stopping. For the time being. Okay, what happened in this hand? Uh, Jack-4, Queen-10. Looks like it went... I'm actually not sure how this hand went. Yeah, so. let, me, let me run it back so we I could just recap it. It went uh, open button from Victor, C bet flop for 700, check, check, turned. Okay. Not a huge fan of that line from Victor. I don't think that hand should bet the flop too often without a heart, but. Uh, open call here. Queen 9 5, check. 30% uh, pot from Victor. I think that's his standard small flop size. And uh, this hand's a reasonable candidate. This hand's going to be mixing in both check and bet, so um, probably fairly even distribution of both. Fedor goes for the check call with king eight here. I think that this hand mainly folds even versus 30%. So um, a bit of a loose continue 
but I think you could low frequency mix call. Uh, a lot of hands will do that versus the smaller bet sizes, and uh, not surprised to see this happen. And then he's got a um, close river decision. Just decided to check. Yeah, it seems like a decent bluff candidate, right? Yeah, I mean, what what Fedor is saying is I don't want to over bluff here, right? And I have all these gut shots, but a lot of those, I think I think his line's fine. I think I think it's fine. He's he's trying to not over bluff. He could have King X suited. Back to Flustra hands the bluff as well as some of the missed gutters. So um, it's close, but I was just surprised he, he seemed to have checked somewhat quickly there, which tells me that maybe he's not balancing his timing super in depth in that spot uh, because his hand is definitely worth at least considering to bet. And we have Victor firing up a cigar, which is a pretty pretty sweet move. That is, that is fantastic. Holy crap. So this is a weird hand. This is check, check, flop, open call. Check, check, flop, check, over, bet, turn. This is, let me think whether it were terrible from Fedor. This is just a terrible, terrible play. Solver would, would not like this. Um, he's turning his hand into a complete bluff. He has lots of showdown value. Um, this is just going to be pure checking the turn. It's going to be low frequency flop bet, and then, um, depending on what size he uses, and then it's going to be, I think, pure check turn. What's he accomplishing with this turn bet? He's just, he's just spewing, basically. And now he's in the river. It's another clear check. Um, he's going to bet the pot, and then uh, Victor has the easiest of easy slam deck snap calls. This is not even remotely interesting. I guess he's slow rolling. I'm, I'm trying to decide what he's doing other than slow rolling. He's got to be slow rolling. Whoa! And we're off. And we have blast off from Doug, ladies and gents. You know, you get, there's two types of poker players in the world. There's... What? <laughs> what? <coughs> Whoa. There are two types of poker players in the world. People who uh, eject out of their seat when they make a bad play or when they run bad, and those who do it when someone else makes a play. By the, the way, the, I, I think that might have... That was a triple barrel, not a check-check flop. I don't know if that changes. Oh! Flops. Oh! It's not 200-400. Oh, right. Okay. 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 Sorry. 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 Well, Guys, I, I'm I'm used to stakes a little bit bigger, Mike. Um, when I saw the amount, I thought it was two hundred four, one or two hundred. Okay, let me rewatch this hand now. Understanding. Okay, he bet the flop. Uh, turn mixes no diamond. Shouldn't bet often. And then river. River no diamond is good. Doesn't have a six or a five though. That's bad. He should be jamming this river a lot. What is this bet size? Ace Jack seven four eight. He should be jamming this river a lot. Because he has ten nine and Victor has Yeah, I think this is this might be exploitably bluff heavy from okay, th by the way, the fold is much more reasonable. So put that to the side. Let's forget all that old logic. So in this spot, button has five six, button has ten nine. And big one has neither. So the button should be doing a ton of jamming when he does decide to bet. Um, a size that you would almost never use is full pot, which is what Fader decided to go. Full pot is extremely bad here. Because if you have hands such as a set or a straight, you want to just wager all the chips. And then you have a small range of hands that want to bet two-thirds this pot. Something such as maybe a weak two-pair ace-king, and then occasionally some traps. And then a hand such as aces really likes it, because when you have aces, it's way less likely they have a call. Um, so his size here is not very good, and his hand selection is somewhat spewy. King Queen is. N I want to say the King Queen would never buff the river if you ran this hand. I want to say it would never buff the river. Um, are, we, are we still on this hand, or are we going through different hands now? Um, we're we're on. Do you want to? We're we're still just live, but. Okay, if, if we ever want to just pause and talk, we can pull up the board. Yeah, do you want to pull sure. this board up and talk about it, actually? Because I think this I, is an interesting one. Yeah, I do. I want to ask chat something, too. Chat, so sometimes I rewind on my stream to, you know, check the, the action that we just might have missed or, you know, maybe look at the hand Doug's talking about. Do you want me to keep it live for the most part? Or would you prefer to see us go back so you're sort of... Uh, Mike, exactly I'm gonna, I'm gonna, see. I'm gonna cut you off. We're not gonna. I, I don't care what they want. This is. I want to go back and and look. So. Well, this time we're gonna go back so we can talk about this hand. I'm just saying, like in general. So it was the. Uh, yeah. It was the king queen hand, right? 
Uh, King Queen Hand, yeah. yeah okay. They're here to hang out with us, Mike. If they don't like it, they can go somewhere else. Oh, all right. Fair enough. GGPoker.tv is, is that other place. <laughs> you can head on over there. If you if you don't want to hear me ra rabble about hands, uh, Queen Deuce seated 3 bet or 4 bet is a bit on the speaker side. Yeah, just, 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 I mean, don't have to worry about it. Um, okay. Yeah, so did you want to say Whatever. anything else about this hand? The king oh, yeah, one sec. Let me just look at it real quick. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm messing up the YouTube player. Why is it? It keeps freezing. Okay. So, yeah, so basically in this spot, uh, Fader doesn't want to use the size. It doesn't really make sense. If he has a straight or a set, he wants to jam. If he has a thinner value bet, he wants to bet a bit smaller. Uh, obviously, if you ran the sim, there'd be a few select hands that would like the size. But when I see this size in this board, what I think is, I want to bluff, but I don't want it to be too expensive. So let's pick a nice size that might get a fold, um, but keeps it cheap. This is a spot where Fader should be mainly jamming. And I don't think that king... You want your opponent to have a king. You want your opponent to have a queen. It's unlikely they have either, but I think low frequency king 10, queen 10 will continue turn. Um, so... You want your opponent to have both of these. So both of these cards, you'd rather have your opponent have. Not having a diamond is good, but I think you'd rather have a hand, you know, I think that it's really going to like hands like 5-2 suited here. 5-3 um, suited. Those are going to be the hands that love tripling. Um, I think this is just Spewy and, and Bad River says. Yeah, we can go back to live. We'll do it live. We'll do it live, Mike! I have to reload this page. Back to the live action here. We, I will try to implement some, you know, picture-in-picture -picture type stuff for you guys. But you know, I, you know, you're gonna have to bear with us. We're we're just having a casual, nice stream here, watching two guys play 100, 200. They're one tabling. There's gonna be so much downtime. I, I gotta be honest with you. I was incredibly disappointed when I found out this was gonna be one tabling. I found it out this morning too. Oof. Yeah, this is looking less like a heads-up challenge and looking more like a publicity stunt. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it, first, I, I think first it, off, it's. I yeah, Go real ahead. quick. I think it's pretty clear that it was. It felt a little forced, like all the Twitter videos and stuff before, and the calling out. It felt a little bit forced, maybe a little bit planned. And then, uh, you know, they're only playing for a week. They're playing. They're playing four total sessions of of a minimum or a maximum. Or, sorry, a minimum of sixteen hundred hands, but probably not many more than that. So, you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Yeah, this is 1,600 hands of small stakes. You know, 100, 200, I'm not saying it's a really small stakes, but for a heads-up challenge, one table of 100, 200 for a week. Um, yeah. Well, hey, publicity stun or not, uh, well, it's, at least... it, it's getting publicity because uh, we got 3,200 3, viewers here with us. Thank you for all tuning in. Very kind of you to say that, Mike. And at least on the bright side, we do get these high-res pictures of their face on the table. And I mean, if that's not what we're here for, what are we here for? Yeah, I mean, for sure. Especially Victor. I mean, you don't get to see him too often, being more of an online guy. So it's nice to put a name or put a face to the screen name, if you will. Okay, so we have an interesting spot developing here, Mike. Open call, uh, ace-8-5 rainbow. We have uh, eight deuce, bets the flop. Uh, it's a hand that makes this flop. It's obviously fine. Fader does go for the check raise. Check raise is the main preferred line here for 7-6. I assume it would check raise something like 60% of the time or so. Do um, you like the size he used? 1160 over... It oh. seemed... It seemed There's a lot of reasonable sizes you can do in check raise spots, so it's less... It's less. Do I like that size specifically? And it's a bit more... Um, you know, is he balanced with it? So I'm not going to make too many comments on that, but yeah, I think that's fine. Turn's weird. Turn's a weird spot because... Top pair is trips, and Button has way more trips than Fedor does. Fedor doesn't really have that many ace-x here. He has a few, but you're not, you're not really incentivized to check raise a lot of your ace-x because you're mainly three-betting your stronger ones pretty. So uh, Fedor's range is now kind of polar, um, but then there's some weird card removal aspects. So I'm not entirely sure what's preferred. He decides to go a little over half pot. Seems okay. Uh, and then Victor does call with an eight. Um, also seems okay. Having the two is a nice card because you unblock all the straight draw bluffs. So I think a hand 
like eight seven here would be uh, pure folding, uh, but king eight or eight two um, are both nice calls because they unblock the straight draws. Um, although I think having a king is better than a two because a two there's a chance he's bluffing with a hand like three two or four two. Uh, and then River, uh, Fader parries a six, goes check, check. I think that is fine from both. I think Fader could could consider firing that River, though. It's possible. What type of size would you expect if you went for uh, a River bet? Well, if you bet the River, you're saying you have... It depends. So you could go smaller and say you have trips or better. I don't think that makes that much sense there because you're not check raising that many ASEX on the flop. Um, I didn't see the, fl the flop size. Maybe as a few more. It was 1160 but... over 300, so... Pretty Maybe he has a few more chips then. So yeah, I think I think either two thirds or um, a very big bet, something around 150% pot. Um, I think those are both reasonable plays. I mean, he can have straights, and he can have boats. So I don't see a reason that you can't get to fire some spots if you don't want. Yeah, that makes sense. Here we have uh, a C bet from Victor on the flop with his pair of fours. Gets floated by Fedor with the jack ten. Pretty standard, I think. Gonna have to uh, defer to Doug on that one, though. And now we have a river spot here. Fedor deciding whether or not to put in a bluff with his jack high. He does. He's gonna go over the pot. 1.5x to be exact. Victor's gotta call 2400 to win 4k. How do you Seems feel about Vic Victor's hand as a call here? Actually... No, this is too loose from Fedor. He can have low pairs. They need to bluff. Yeah, this is this is too too loose. Jack high is too strong in the range, I think, to bluff there. You're gonna have hands such as twos and threes, four five, ten four, seven four. It's just it, he's just too high up in his range to bluff Jack high. So what was your question? Uh, Victor's hand as a call on the river. I I, I assume blocking the four is bad because you really want Fedor to have a hand like seven yeah. seven four suited that now has to bluff or whatever, right? Blocking the four is definitely bad. Yeah, it makes sense. So I think I think it's a reasonable lay down. Uh, open call here. Eight seven seven. We have trips for limitless and top pair for fair. Should be an interesting one. I'm sorry about that that brief uh loss of the stream, guys. Fader bets flop. Limitless check calls, trapping the trips. And that's a reasonable play of trips. Trips, you kind of have to put into every line. You have some nice check raise, some nice check call, some nice check raise turns, some nice check call. Sometimes uh, check raise, nice check call river, depending on which trips you have. So totally fine to check call flop. Fedor, uh, he should be checking the flop a good portion, but betting is okay. And then now just, it's just easy turn check. You don't even really have to think about it. You just know you're checking it back. Um, so he does bet. And now back <laughs> over to limitless. So he does bet. Um, yeah, I mean, and this is just a... You know, what's he trying to accomplish here, really? Um, I mean, it is half pot, so maybe for half... I haven't looked at half pot sizes here. Maybe top pair gets in the mix more for those. But uh, this just strikes me as we're getting everything worse to fold and everything better to call. And then when you get check raised, you're just, you're just really unhappy. Yeah, I mean, you're, cer so, you're, you're certainly going to get bluffed by this check raise assuming you fold i mean there's going to be hands that do check raise as a buff 9 10 or, or a 6x perhaps so yeah he's basically uh giving himself a chance to lose an extra chance to lose though he does peel yeah and this check raise from victor i'm, I'm sure it's okay uh, it's not my favorite because both players can have uh all nine six and both players can have pr probably you know well i mean not Nine six and six four are both are in both players' ranges. Um, so, I mean, do I love check raising the turn with this hand? P probably not. It seems a little bit thin. I think I'd rather have a better seven um, or a boat or a straight. So this would probably be getting into my check call three times range. Uh, and then on the river, I think I think we're looking at a spot where you need to block bet. Um, we have a real dynamic board changing river. Um, I think we want to bet one third pot here and make it really tough for him with a hand such as queens whereas if you bet the size and he has an eight or a queen or a hand like queens he just has to fold i mean maybe if he has queens with a heart he can consider a call but um you know we kind of see both players way overplaying their hands here uh the eight four bet bet is just 
kind of spewy, and I think Jack 7 is likely not going to be a raise on the turn that often. It might be low frequency, but if it does range raise, it's going to either trap River, um, kind of a nice trap candidate, uh, or it's going to go for the block bet size. Good stuff. Here we have a single raise pot. Victor, I believe, see about the flop. Or no, that can't be. Sorry, a single raise pot. Check, check on the flop. These pot sizes, it's tough to get used to, you know? We're so used to that. Yeah. Those juicy 200, it's, 400 spots. It's been throwing me off a little bit. Victor does take um, this one down with the turn does he bet. Delay, does he delay see about that? He did delay see about. Yeah, that doesn't seem very good either. What are you really trying to have accomplish here? If if Fedor has a better king high or ace high, he's going to continue. And then if he has a worse hand than you, he's going to fold. So what right. are you what are you doing, bud? I mean, I guess... What are, you, what, guess what, are you, what are you going for? You do deny that equity from, like even the 5-4 that folds, but it's pretty pretty small merit con compared to uh, the demerits that the play likely has. Yeah, it's... It's probably not good. I see a handful of confused people in chat, so I'll try to uh, enlighten you. So what's happening right now is we are watching the GG Poker stream of this match. We were going to just pull up the table on GG Poker and then... We were going to have no cards, because obviously a normal poker table doesn't show the cards. But they locked the table on GG. I'm not sure why. Uh, so you can't even observe it. So I d we just pulled up their stream. We're going to be sweating uh, that way. So that's why we're able to see the cards and why you see Fedor and Victor. If you do want to watch, you know, their... Because they're, they're talking to us. You can see Fedor and Victor. If you want to watch that, you can go to ggpoker.tv. Watch that. Um... And then you could hear, you know, them kind of, I don't know what they're talking about. Maybe they're trash talking. Maybe they're doing whatever. But if you're more interested in Doug's commentary, my play-by-play, -play, and kind of just more of a an analysis-heavy stream, then this is probably the one you want to be on, because Doug's going to talk about a lot of the hands. We're going to pause when there's an interesting spot, th things of that nature. So, you know, decide what you want to watch and uh, make your decision. I'm not going to talk about it too much. Mm -hmm. Now we're just going to focus on some hands here as Fedor takes I one down. And and Cha, I just I just gotta put it out there. Mike has truly one of the kindest hearts of any person I've ever met, and he's very kind to you people, you sick savage beasts. And and if you are unhappy, you can fucking leave. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Anyway, should we talk about poker here? I'm trying to get a special guest on, but they might not do it, so I don't want to make any. I'm. We may we may or may not have a special guest. We'll just. I got I got the perfect spot for him on the overlay, so uh, that's great if they can make it. Whoever it is, I don't even know, guys. Yeah, I'm I'm as in the dark yeah, as you it might, are. It might, it might not happen. Okay, let's let's talk about some hands. We got King Nine for Fedor opens the button. Victor does call King Seven of Clubs. Fine from both. Six three Deuce. These boards are kind of weird. Um, low boards are weird because obviously any hand has a lot of equity. You either have two overs or you have a gut or you have a pair. So um, you need to be a little more careful with what you decide to bet. It's a lot easier for the out of position player to float. Um, check, check. I think that's, of course, fine. Uh, turn really should go check, check. It does. And uh, I think River is just going to go check, check. I mean, this hand is going to be too... Both players' hands are too high to bluff and are too low to value bet. So this is just a very standard check down win for Fedor. Fedor opens up on the button here with the jack two of diamonds. Expect to see a call from Victor with the queen five. He does. Pretty bricky flop. Expect I pr expect to see Fedor win this one with a C bet pretty often. You, Doug? Um, I just realized I was watching the wrong stream again. There's so many fucking streams. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I expect this to go bet fold often. I mean, this board's going to be high frequency bet for Fedor. Jack deuce is going to be hand like betting. And uh, Victor's hands, of course, are going to just be a pure fold, so... You're totally on the money there, Mike. You've seen a hand or two of heads up in your day. Indeed. It feels like easy mode with the cards up, too. Like, I gotta say. Like, no no wonder those uh, those guys on ESPN make it look so easy and stuff. You just say what they have and talk about what hand it is and then what they lose to and all that stuff. It's real easy. Absolutely. I got, I got a good uh, right. a good number of hours in streaming with no hull cards. Much, much different challenge. Though I liked it. I liked just being able to speculate in the constant suspense. Ooh, what are they going to have? That was great. As much as people liked to complain about it. That is a very different experience. Very, very different. Okay. So, um, this hand, uh, 
Victor bet flop. Did he bet? The, he checked the turn, right? I, did he bet the based turn? Based on pot size, I think so. I'm going to rewind the stream real quick. You guys are seeing me rewind, by the way, in case there's any confusion. Yeah, check, check, on turn, confirmed. Bit of a strange turn check. I would expect to see a bet here. Really high frequency. I mean, mixing in a check every now and then is okay, but not something you want to do often. Um, and then Fader has a clear over check, and Victor has a clear over bet, and Fader has a clear over check fold. So this this hand's not much. Not much can really happen unless people want to get wild. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot here, Doug. Ready for this? Mm, mm. Potential potential situation for shots fired. Mm. Do you think? Daniel Negreanu would be the favorite over Fedor in a 10k hand heads-up match. I think so. I think so, yeah. Somewhat close, though. It's, it seems like you get, I mean, you get it, it, a good it, thing. It, 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 it kind of depends how serious Fedor takes it, right? Right. Exactly. I, I don't know. I don't know how serious he's gonna take it. If Fedor, Fedor's a smart dude, you know, for for how bad he is a heads-up, he's a smart dude. He's had a lot of success in poker, so. Um, also very lucky. You got to factor that in. True. So, you know, if he worked really hard, I think he could be better than Daniel at heads up. But I mean, Daniel has had four months of just work on this. So right. right. For sure. If, if they played a big publicized match, I'd probably bet Fedor. But if it was today who played, I would take Daniel. Yeah. It makes sense. It, that's sort of saying Fedor is going to be quite a bit better at leveraging you know tools and his his network to get better at heads up and then if he's not ahead of daniel he'll at least be able to overtake him in skill before the challenge yes yeah. but yeah that makes so, a lot of sense victor floats a one third sorry 30 percent flop c bet here with jack eight diamonds which just seems extremely loose. way too loose yeah yeah i mean with one diamond on the board it's it's probably fine right if, yeah if then he has something. something yeah he has something there yeah um this is just punt city, and now he has to bet. He has a lot of aces here, so I would expect to see a lot of bigger sizes. This two-thirds pot makes a lot of sense here. You expect, I think, to, see, uh, expect to see a raise from Fedor here with the uh, river aces up? I mean, absolutely. I don't really see a, another line. I mean, what's he... What's he worried Man, about, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> this, this should just go raise. And then Victor does not have a good bluff candidate. He's not going to want to bluff with non-paired hands without 6 or 4, so this would just be total and utter spew for Victor to do anything other than fold to a raise. So, yeah. And he does make the quick fold. I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick. One moment. All right, Chad, I'll walk you through it. We got 9-6 in the button. Victor's going to open it up. Fedor, King Jack should mix, mainly through bet. On 125 big blinds, you're going to want to mainly through bet. Probably something around 80% 80 or so, 90%. Uh, maybe pure. Depends how he wants to structure this prey. Does three bet. Victor folds. Standard stuff. Yeah, one table, chat. One table. No hands. Small stakes. I mean, the stakes aren't super small, I guess. Uh, this will go fold. Six seven two is going to open King Jack. Same situation, mainly three bet. Could make a mixed call. Does call. Check. Seven six. Um, seven six should mix, about half a half check, half bet here. When he does bet, should be small. Does go for the small bet. And then Victor Pure folds, which he does decide to call. Maybe very low frequency mix check call. I kind of think not though. Maybe maybe it's okay, low frequency mix check call. God, this hand sucks. Turn completes the flush. Um, I think typically I don't like betting hands like 7-6 here because if I check, then my straight draw has equity, whereas if I bet, it doesn't. But um, it, it would still get in the mix for some low frequency bets. I think a lot of times you like a bigger turn bet, but yeah. All right, open call. Uh, standard from both. 
Ace nine seven check. Uh, Victor decides to go for a bigger flop size. Definitely good on this board. Um, big sizes on these higher board textures seem to be nice. Just go for the full pot size over to Fedor. Fedor is going to have to continue with 10-6, uh, so he does lay it down. We're going to get a lot of those today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't know what else to say. Um, 6-5 six, six, could maybe mix fold versus pot, but 10-6 uh, versus pot is going to just be... It's rainbow board, straight draws especially good. Going to have to check call. Uh, Ace three open call standard from both check check. Um, Fedor has a hand that should mainly bet turn now. Um, I, I I don't really like checking these kinds of hands too often, but they will low frequency check. The reason is that check raise is a bit overplaying your hand, so uh, usually these end up in just the bet lines. Um, he does decide to bet about seventy percent pot. I like his line. Good to have heads so, up action again. Drop a one in the chat if you agree. One's in the chat, boys, and and probably the ten S girls that are here. Se seven to eight girls. Yeah, seven. Sorry, yeah, we had to, we we rounded up. We need to get we need to round that number down. Yeah. I and mean, Caitlin might be watching downstairs, so that's always good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, open call, Jack ten, Queen Jack, center from both. Uh, queen Jack could low frequency three a bet, but call is obviously fine. Uh, eight eight deuce. Check, small bet, very standard here. You're going to mainly want to bet, but mix in some checks with the jack ton. Uh, check call is uh, pretty standard with, with queen jack. You might want a low frequency check raise, but mainly check call. Uh, Fader does check turn. Uh, Victor, two there's pot. Uh, you like this? I like this a lot. Open ender uh, has a spade in his hand, quite nice. Um, so, good spot to barrel. I like his bet size as well. Back over to Fader. Fader, I think, is going to have to check call. If his opponent is bluffing, he's ahead of them. Obviously, he's drawing to a very strong straight. Um, and he beats every other straight draw. And then on the river, I think I like giving up. I think he has enough lower hands to bluff with. It's better to have hands that do not have a spade for the river barrel. Um, I think the hand was actually nicely played from both. That's a nicely played. Someone someone in chat a moment ago says that uh, standard is the biggest compliment you're going to give these guys today. But we got a nicely played, so... You were you were immediately proven wrong, once again, chat. Well, look, I'm not I'm not gonna berate people for playing their hands well. Exactly. Uh, and and I'm not I'm not incentivized to talk shit if I think they play well. If they play well, they play well. I mean, I'm not you know I'm just trying to give an honest an honest assessment. And I, I think that's why when I say something about someone's play being bad, like, oh, Doug's being a fucking dick. But the reality is, I'm just not sugarcoating the plays. If the play is bad, the play is bad. If the play is good, the play is good. I mean, I, I, I'm, we'll see what we have today. The, the reality is that heads-up poker is really, really, really difficult. Um, and so people will mess up all the time. I played so many hands badly in my match, but um, I played a lot of hands well too. So I'm just going to give an accurate assessment of what I think people are doing out here in the streets. For sure. On this hand here, we have Fedor c-betting the flop with his flopped flush. Gets called by Victor with his open ender and second not flush draw. And now, after check check on the turn, Victor puts in a river bet. Quick call from Fedor seems fairly standard all around there. Yeah. And two diamond hands make nice trap candidates because more likely your opponent does not have a flush and thus will have to bluff. So I like I like Fedor's line there for sure. Right, because if... if uh victor to expand on what you're saying and explain it a little further uh if victor were to have the two of diamonds there a, a card that fedor blocks he would not be betting he would more than likely be checking to take a showdown value so we want him to not have those right and when he has the two of diamonds um well it's one less diamond to get value from basically um and it's one less diamond he can have that will uh will check so it's a little bit less value to get so there's um more incentive for you to to try and let your opponent bluff. Makes a lot of sense as we see the three bet get through for Victor there. I keep going to say on the right, but there's only one table. For some reason, I, I think it's the right table. Diamond hands in chat. We got him. Likely going to see an open 3-bet fold here. See, that's one thing about the cards-up action is we just know what's going to happen. 
a lot of the time. It's kind of, kind of, uh, eh. A little bit, little bit suboptimal. I know people, I know people like to see the cards, but it's a shame when you just know it's going to well, go open fold or open through fold or whatever. I, I think it is better for the viewer experience to have cards, but it's a little worse for the, well, I don't know. It's, it, it's just, it, it is better, but there's less mystique. Right. There's no, what's going to happen here from, you know, you mainly know what's going to happen. Right, for sure. And it also, obviously having the cards up, there's kind of a, a minor thing, but it pops into my mind. It's just like the bias it creates in being able to, as a viewer and as a commentator, but like as a viewer listening to commentary, you might be a little biased because you see their hands and you you may not, it, the when you hear the commentary analysis, it won't be quite as pure because you're seeing a hand that they actually have and, you know, it might cause some sort of, you know, dissonance or whatever. Mike, if someone did hop on the stream, um, voice or, ju or just voice or voice and video, would they would they immediately would their voice immediately be heard on the stream? If they popped into this channel, yeah, this Discord okay. channel. Okay. Okay. Let me know if they need an invite. Um, I can I can send them. Okay. Cool. An invite. Yeah, they'll they'll be heard immediately. Um, and then the, the video will get thrown off when they turn their video on because you're, you're positioned correctly, so then I'll just have to, like, reposition. But they'll That's be, fine. They, I, don't, they, I, don't, they... I don't even know if they're going to have video. Yeah, cool. Vo voice only is totally fine, of course. Man, I'm on the edge of my seat here. <laughs> I, I, I'm not entirely convinced the person to join yet, so I am on the edge of my seat totally as well. Fine, of course. Man, I'm on the edge of my seat here. In two minutes, we will have a special guest joining us in two minutes. And the special guest is Button Clicker, one of the two heads up players that I worked with extensively over the last six months. Um, probably the best heads up player in the world, at least one of them. Uh, all around, all around beast. Uh, not old enough to drink alcohol in America. That's the world we live in. Um, he will be joining us in a couple minutes. Uh, I assume we're going to get some thoughts on uh, Limitless's game. And uh, maybe some general heads up no limit thoughts. Uh, I'm not sure, but you guys can stay tuned, and that player will be hopping by, popping on by. Good uh, friend of mine by this point, I'd say. We've spent a day or two chatting about some heads up stuff. Did you meet him, like right before the challenge? Did you sort of seek him out, or had you, were you guys sort of on each other's radar already? Well, when the heads up challenge started, I, I wanted to get a, a good team of players um, to learn from, and so just kind of. You know, looked around, tried to see who was out there, and his name popped up. And before you know it, we're working together. Interesting pot here, by the way. Yeah, three bet pot, a couple spade, spade hands. Victor flops the top pair. A lot going on there. He's almost certainly going to put in a bet, and we're more than likely going to see Fedor float. Yeah, so normally in this spot, you're going to see bigger bet sizes. I think the normal size here is half pot, two thirds. Some people use full pot. Um,. This hand doesn't love those sizes, but a lot of guys aren't going to use a small bet. So if you want to use two sizes, I like Victor's play here. Um, but I think most players would use one size and go bigger. Fader facing that small size is going to have to float. Again, possibly a timing tell from Fader. Very quickly calls here. Uh, just kind of something to be thinking about. I think on this turn, Victor's going to want to check. I don't really see a ton of value. He does go for another block bet size. I think you're going to want to size up here mainly. Uh, bet big enough to be able to jam the river with over pairs. Uh, I don't see this bet doing a lot for you. And but I mean, Fedor has no choice but to fold. I mean, anything other than fold here would be would be quite spewy. So um, you know, he's going to think about it, but he's going to lay it down. And we do have a special guest in, introducing the only one and only button clicker. How's it going, Hello, guys? Going pretty good. Yeah, welcome to the stream, clicker. Nice to meet you. Thanks. <laughs> so how, how have you been lately man what have you been up to grinding it's some more restrictions coming again for corona more more restrictions in in finland or, or where yeah in finland it seems well that sucks not much else to do than grind indeed yeah that that does make some sense so what are your thoughts on this heads up match between uh fedor and limitless Seems like most of just the publicity stunt with the uh, one tabling 400 hands a day. Should be like 20k hands, two tables, some higher stakes. Get some blood going. 
Yeah, that's that's, you think... that's more your speed. Yeah, you actually have um some some real first hand experience playing a little bit. Is that correct? Yeah, I played him like twenty five k hands in the last year or so. That did go pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm aware. I was I was uh, we were we were chatting during that. It's was a, was a nice was a nice uh, series of sessions there. I think you posted the graph online, right? Didn't you win nine hundred k or something? Yeah, but it was way more with the Xbox. Oh, hell way yeah. more. Okay. Nice. That that's so, that's cross books for you, uh, you viewers at home there. So what what are your what are your thoughts on Limitless's game? I think it's pretty overrated by, by the public. Yeah, that 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 seem that seems fair. He went on that on Joey's podcast and you know called himself the best in the world. And I think actually before I got back into talking about this with. Uh, uh, with you guys as well as just the heads up community and preparing for the challenge. If you don't know about heads up and some guy says, I'll play anyone, you know, you think, okay, this guy's probably um, the best, but then you don't realize that he's actually playing everyone and, and doing a lot of losing, um, which normally the best in the world, that's not, that's not happening. Yeah. It seemed like after he issued the challenge on, on Joey's podcast, like everyone just rushed to play him as fast as they could. So, what do you think? Would, would you would you play Limitless in one of these formats? I'm assuming yes, given that you've crushed him for what seems to be millions of dollars. I would assume you'd be down for this, or do you think he's scared, or what? Yeah, I'd love to play him on GG on like a challenge format or something. What stakes would you be prepared to play him? Two hundred four hundred seems good. Two hundred four? You could really just two hundred four hundred. This is your chance. You're up millions. Some nice friendly stakes, you know. Some fr oh, yeah. friendly. Keeping it friendly. Yeah, I can't be going too hard. <laughs> yeah, you can't You can't be going too We don't want anyone to get hurt. Um, my understanding is that uh, Limitless wants to play you live in, in person. What are, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I could see that being arranged, but through the COVID stuff, it's going to probably take quite a while before we could arrange something like that. Okay, so I think I think the main takeaway here is you are calling out Limitless to a high stakes actual non publicity stunt match of two hundred four hundred with webcams with a judge to review because you and I I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you're kinda of calling him a bitch. Is, is that correct? I'm I'm just I'm picking up that vibe. That's right. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see what we can get going. You heard it here, guys. Uh, Limitless overrated. Um, again, kind of a bitch. Strong words uh, there from Button Clicker, and um, says he's willing to play live or online in a real match. Although friendly stakes, I guess. Um, <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever that means. <laughs> whatever that means. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure if Limitless is looking for higher action, there could be. Uh, it could be arranged. Uh, let's. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, for those in the chat who are confused, I see some I see some confused people. Button clicker is the man jo who just joined us. Uh, if if his volume's a little faint, sorry about that. He is turned up all the way. But anyway, he is a Finnish poker crusher, heads up specialist, and he's actually uh, one of Doug's two coaches uh, from the Doug vs. Uh, Daniel Degranu challenge. Doug seeked out the best players he could find, and he found the one. Who many consider to be the best in the world at one-on-one -on -one poker, and he's joining us now to uh, share some thoughts on Limitless this match, and uh, apparently issue a challenge of his own. So some exciting stuff. Let me actually ask you this question as well, while you have you here, Henry. Uh, I tweeted the other day. I tweeted and I said, Fedor equals extremely weak at heads of the limit. Every reg dreams of having him sit their table, spewtastic and punts hard. Limitless, one of the most overrated regs on the planet, is proof for being the best at saying on a podcast. We kind of talked about that already. Uh, would you say those comments were fair? Seems pretty right to me. Fader hasn't played like much heads up at all, and I don't think he's done that well, other than winning the tournament. That does sound like Fedor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, winning tournaments for sure. A, right. a man, a man of many words here, Henry. We're gonna need a little bit of mic time. So if you could, if you could speak a little less, that would be great for us. <laughs> Someone in the chat did say that he's one of the most talkative Finns he's ever heard. So <laughs> maybe, maybe this is re relatively talkative for for the Finns. 
Yeah, I'm for sure not a man of many words. Nothing wrong with that. A man of clicking many buttons. Okay, well, I guess to wrap this up then, we will say that Heads Up Challenge has been issued 200, 400 plus. I'm thinking more like 300, 600, 400, 800. Uh, based on what I think is going to happen here or what we would be willing to play, and maybe 501k, of course. And, and 1k, 2k is not out of the question, but if it goes bigger than that, we'll probably do that too. Anyway, heads up challenge. Thrown down, 25,000 hands, ready to go. Two tabling at least, I assume. Gauntlet thrown down. We can do it with cameras and judges. Possibly live, although you're a bit weird about that, probably because you're still a kid. Uh, either way, let it be known. You heard it here first, guys. Button clicker is better than limitless his words and he's again his words calling him a bitch okay thank you for joining us here today henry thanks for stopping by all right thanks yeah, yeah appreciate it clicker take care had to, had to talk him into stopping by and and i and i think i think he felt a little bit awkward there he's not not a man of the public eye yeah that's okay i think that went that went quite well i mean we got the, we got the challenge off we got some funny words off we'll take it you always take it. Okay, I believe there's poker being played. Is that correct? Um. Yes. Yes. I just heard in my in my earpiece there is poker being played. So let's get back. Very to that. nice. It looks like it's still one table. Still one table. No big pots yet today, really. As you can see from the stacks, uh, you know, you see twenty thousand starting, and Victor has twenty five k. Fedor has twenty five k him himself. So not too much has happened today, though. We're waiting around. We'll be here when it does. Ooh, we have a pot developing. Uh, open queen jack. Three bet nine, ten nine is standard. You want to be doing that low frequency. Uh, queen jack could consider a four bet, but he does make the call. And then both players flop a spade. Uh, sorry, five five four two spades. Both players have just players have one spade. So this is the kind of spot where a lot of times the player that really wants it more is going to end up taking it down. Who wants it more? That's the big question right now. We do see a 40% uh, flop size from Fedor. Seems fine. Uh, and now for his 40%, uh, Victor is going to be really inclined to call. He does have a spade, so he has the backdoor flush draw. Uh, also blocks uh, some of the hands that would consider banging the turn. So his opponent will be a little more likely to check. Uh, does call turn 8. And man, Fedor has a pretty interesting bluff candidate. He has a club and a spade. Obviously no not, no 6, no 7. Those are cards you want to have, but blocks both flush draws. So if he bets here, he's gonna get a nice portion of rivers to run it on, um, and uh, yeah, neither neither both of his cards are good cards to have. Let's see if Fedor does decide to put in the second barrel. He does block both of the flush draws, so that's something. Best two thirds pot takes down. I I like this line from everyone. I think I think that this was uh, well played across the board. <laughs> well played across the board. I'm gonna quickly refresh the stream, guys. Just. Bear with me for a sec, just to make sure we're as live as possible. So yeah, guys, that was an official declaration of a challenge from the Finnish Heads Up Crusher button clicker to Limitless. Playing as high as, I mean, there was 1k, 2k mentioned there. That's a, that's a $200,000 buy-in game at 100 blind steep. So if you want to see that happen, which I don't know why you wouldn't, I think you should start tweeting at Victor. I mean, I think that's the best way to do this. So let's let's let's, I mean, make, let's make Victor hear this challenge. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I'm just saying that I I think that he that he might play one k two k maybe two k four k. I don't know. I don't want to say things that he didn't say, but he said at least I believe it was three k six k. I think was at least his words. Um, so mean, we'll just leave it you, at that. You you mean three hundred six hundred? Oh, you're fucking. Just, gotcha. just yeah, fucking you got me. Yeah. You got me. Yeah, you're t you're too good <laughs> yeah, at that, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You've gotten me probably dozens of times over the years where I'm just like hit hook, line, and sinker for something that. And those are just the ones you know about. Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. You 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 like a good reveal though, to be fair. So I think I'd probably find out about most of them. Yes, of course, I do like a good reveal. Yes. Um, we'll see. I, I I don't see Limitless playing him. Uh, to be honest, I think like I think that he he lost a lot in the in the first match. Um, I do think he wants to play if it's a, a sort of live venue online battleship style or something. Right. Um, I don't think that uh, Henry, uh, although he's not his button clicker, really wants to do that. He he's still a kid. Uh, I don't know why he doesn't want to do that. If I had won that much money, if Degrande, if I love poker, which he does, and Let's just say I was Henry and I was playing Negreanu, and then Negreanu said he'd never win live. I'd be a, see you at the Aria, man. Head on down there. But right. uh, 
So maybe they'll figure something out. Um, we do have an interesting but, pot developing here. Sorry to cut you off there, Doug. Oh, yeah, sure. Victor three betting the pocket queen's preflop. Fedor making a very standard call with the jack nine of hearts, getting a dream flop, jack, jack 10. Victor decides to check it over to Fedor on the flop, who put in a flop bet. I think of around half pot, got called. A little less than half pot, maybe. What do you think about Victor's flop check there, Doug? I think it's fine. Uh, you want to be, on paired boards, you want to be taking a lot of different lines. Um, so I think it's fine. Uh, I don't mind it at all. Also, Jack Jack 10 aboard, the imposition's going to have a lot of trips, so you'd be a little more careful. Of course, betting is fine too. But uh, I think his line of check call is completely reasonable. Um, Fedor, Fedor has a hand that will sometimes check flop. I think that most jacks bet, Jack-9 specifically, Queen-Jack, Jack-9, are hands that might be a little more inclined to do some checking back as they have better playability across turns and rivers. Um, but, of course, they're still going to be mainly betting, so I do like Fedor's decision to bet the flop. Turn King, Victor checks once again after the check call flop. Now uh, Fedor decides to go for half-pop bet. Bit of a bit of an interesting bet here. Um, I would think we would be doing some checking on the turn with Jack-9, uh, but mainly betting. And um, I'm trying to think what to think about half pot. It's probably okay. I think half pot's okay. It's not the size that I would I use here, but half pot does make a lot of sense. The big blind can have a lot of ace queen type hands, um, occasional traps and stuff like that. So uh, you don't want to go too large and kind of you know blow your spot. And now, um, see, this is sort of the problem with half pot. It makes yeah, the river super awkward. What size do we like here? I. I'm not sure. If you jam here, do you get called by that many worse hands? Yeah, I mean, maybe like a king queen feels forced to look you up or something like that. But I think you probably, I think you probably jam here, and if they have ace queen, they have ace queen, and then you get check. Yeah, I think you, I think you jam. I mean, yeah, if they have ace queen, it sucks. Um, but ace queen is going to mainly bet flop, depending on flop size. Um, so he's a little more likely to have hands. Um, like a queen, a king, or a ten. Uh, he does jam, and uh, Victor not even not even considering things with queen, so lays, lays it down, which I think is fine. I mean, it's at least interesting, right? You block his queen, you block queen nine, but if Fedor is jamming every check, then, uh, you know, blocking the straight is not really as important, so I think it's a reasonable hand from both. Yeah, for sure. Maybe some maybe some larger bet sizes from Fedor on the turn there, perhaps, was, was maybe your, your biggest critique of that hand, it seems. Jack's on the button here for Fedor, but doesn't look like he's going to get any action. He's up against the A4 off. Victor more than likely going to muck that one, which he does. Canty Stream says, LMAO, folding queens and lights a cigar. That's the good life, huh? Okay, let's focus on some more hands. Oh, by the way, by the way, we're, we're, we're receiving reports that Victor said uh, in the, in their stream that he said you should shut up and go play him now he's sitting. N perhaps not realizing, uh, maybe due to his privilege of being a non-American in poker, that we can't, we don't just get, get to just sit at poker tables on GG Poker or Poker Stars or sites like that. That's not an option for us, Victor. I understand you're up on your, you're up on me, your... Doug, not Clicker, me. No, yeah, he was talking about you. Oh, okay. Get off your, get off your high horse over there in Poland, Victor. We can't all uh, play on these sweet sites with cool software that has a, have emojis and all that stuff. We have shitty apps and, oh. and things like that. Don't make me play poker, man. I don't want to do it. No one can make you do anything. Why would you have to play? Oh, because the... it's... Uh, I got yeah. Because <laughs> it's like hourly or something. I don't know. You, to be fair, though, you would not only would you have to play poker to, to play him, as we see a pretty interesting turn here, Fedor turning the two pair... Victor with the straight. I believe this is a three-bet pot. No, no, no. It can't be three-bet pot, right? I'll check it in a sec. But uh, 
you would not only have to play poker, you would also have to travel to play oh, on, we, the, I mean, on the particular site. I'm sure we could play on Ace Hair or something. There, there are ways that we could. Gotcha. Yeah. We could arrange this. Okay, so this. Sorry, guys. This was a three bet pot. Uh, Fedor is the three butter. Check, check on the flop, and then Fedor bet the turn got called. Bit of a thin turn bet here from Fedor. Ooh, and a check back on the river from Victor it's there. Totally, totally standard. Makes sense. Queen. Queen. And Queen's flush higher possible. straight. Flush higher straight, and then Fedor shouldn't be check calling. Um, many hands outside of straights. So. What do you really accomplish by betting with King A? I think it's very standard. Marowichi well, says... Oh, sorry to cut you off. Uh, Marowichi says, What does Doug think about Clicker's challenge to Malinowski? Is there a chance of this happening? We were just talking about that a bunch, man. I recommend... Uh... Who is Malinowski? Uh, Limitless. Oh. Yeah, that's his last name. Um... Who, the, who, the, who the fuck is that? <laughs> who, the, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> Yeah, but if you uh, if you want to hear the thoughts, then just re, uh, go on the uh, the stream replay and rewind like ten minutes. You'll hear a bunch about that challenge. Short answer God, is you, Doug wants you, that challenge to happen, and there is a small chance, at least. You gotta stir the pot, Mike. You gotta stir the pot. Let's get a real challenge, not a publicity stunt with two faces bigger than their webcams. You know, get a real challenge. Some blood in the streets. Something you can sink your fucking teeth into. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one thing about this challenge that... Nice juicy steak. <laughs> one thing about this challenge that is, I find very interesting, is the amazing coincidence that this feud occurred between two players who happened to both be GG Poker pros. I thought that that was just a mind-blowing coincidence, right? What a feud. Yeah. Wait, wait, Limbless is a GG Poker pro? Well, he has like a custom avatar, so I th assumed he he was. I mean, I think. Did they just I don't make? Know, actually. Did they just make custom avatars for everyone? Man, twenty twenty one poker is wild. Maybe. Remember back on Full Tilt when it was super notable when someone had a it was like a red pro. They had their own little avatar. Sometimes they yeah. they get made fun of. There was that one guy who got made fun of for looking like an alien. Oh my God, Alan Bostic. That's right. Yeah. Nice, nice memory. I could not remember that. I think he was really upset about that, too. I was at his 2-5 table once at the win, and I brought it up, but I didn't know about the history of it. I was just like, oh, yeah, you had, like, a custom avatar, because people talked about it, so I just knew he had one. And he he wasn't, like... He he said something like, yeah, a lot of people like to talk about that, or something. Something okay, that was well, very I'm clearly... Gonna, I'm going to have to hold you. We have a disaster developing here. <laughs> Open so... queen nine, three-bet queens, call queen nine. It's fine. King seven five, two spades. Small bet, raise. Ooh, I don't know if I'm a fan of this one. Well, regardless of whether or not you're a fan of it, we got a very interesting turn here. Does it get into the raise category? I would assume not, but if it did, it would be very low frequency. Um, it's just way better to use queen jack, queen ten. Straight draws, plus draws, your king X for value, your two pairs for value, your bottom set for value. It's just way, way stronger. Interest, um, interesting lead here from, from Victor, no? Very weird lead. I don't know. I've not studied this, and um, I've not studied this. I mean, the ace is good for the big blind, definitely, but it's a spade. Is that good for the big blind? I lean towards no. Button's fighting more suited combos, I think. So, and then Button has way more suited combos that are not ace and king, I think. No, maybe that's not true. Victor, or uh, rather, Fedor does peel versus that small I mean, he, turn he, bet. He, he can't fold. He has a spade, and he's facing a roughly 10% pot bet. There's no way around folding, or around at least calling. Right. So he, he has to play the river. Um, 13k river. in the middle now. Obvious check from Queens, and Fedor is going to feel kind of incentivized to bluff. He has a spade, and he's not going to have a ton of worse hands. I think if he has a hand such as 9-8 of clubs, he kind of has to fold the turn, even though it's such a good price, because it's just so easy to have a flush draw. So I think a lot of those gutter hands are going to have to fold turn. 
Um, maybe nine eight can call, but you know four three suited or something. And oh, that's double getter. Oh man, this was just this was just ownage. Yeah. This was just absolute ownage. It, it it's weird to talk about that hand because you know obviously Fedor Gems River and and Limitless Fold. It's weird to talk about that hand because I'm just not familiar with this turn lead. Right. It's it just it just seems very strange, and I don't know if the solvers like it or not because I've not looked at that spot. Um, but what I can say is, Fedor's line is a bit on the loose side, and then you have to ask yourself: Is Queen's a good calling candidate? And and I think the fact he just snap folded, I, I think he needs to take his time and think about this, right? Because when he jams the river, he's not saying he has a king. He's saying he has essentially trips or better. So how often does Victor have trips? And I think the answer is not that often. Um, he has to bet call raise in the flop with an ace. What ace would that be? It can't be a flush draw ace because the ace is on board. So, you know, ace... What? It can't even be the back draw flush draw. I think that's blocked too. So what ace does he have? Maybe he'd bet call some ace, queen, ace, jack. But with, with like with with like a jack of spades or a queen of spades. Right. But those are a pretty small portion of his overall range, um, and those will be doing some flop checking as well. So, I mean, you know, how many aces does he have? Not many. He can definitely have ace king. He can definitely have uh, kings. He can definitely have aces. But these are all not many combos. Um, ace king is a, is a good chunk. He can have some flushes. Um, but then he has to think about this. He's doing this 10% turn lead strat. I assume he's doing that with a lot of his range, or maybe all of his range. Gets called. What hands trap river? Well, I would assume if he has a flush, he's going to bet river himself, I think. Um, at least good flushes, I imagine, are going to bet river himself. He might consider betting an ace. He might consider betting his boats. So the question kind of becomes, what hands is he trapping on the river? And how does queens play against that? And I think that... Um, when you have queens, it is kind of weird because you do block some potential bluffs. So you have to think about that a little bit. Um, it's probably better to bet to call with a king than queens just for that reason alone. Uh, and then he also can have some some other bluff catchers. But I would have expected to at least see him think about this one because he has the queen of spades. That's a good card. You block, um, you know, you block flushes. You block your opponent from having maybe ace queen that might be racing the flop as well. Um, I would expect to at least see some thinking about that one because I don't think it's super clear cut when you have that spade in your hand. Yeah, we've seen a couple snap folds from from uh, Victor today, and not not saying there were spots where he should be calling, but there are spots where you could at least consider calling. I mean, Doug just talked for a good three minutes about why that hand could be a call and the merits and demerits of it being a call. And he had that other one earlier with pocket queens on jack-jack-10, king, brick, or something like that. Yeah, and I, I also think that... Um, I also think that we're seeing sort of the play styles match up a bit. And you can see Fedor is a bit a bit loose and spewy in some of these spots. I think queen-9, bit of a loose play pretty. Not, not terrible, but a bit loose. Um, bit of a very loose flop raise. You know, very loose flop raise. Um, Standardish turn call is a weird spot. And then uh, River, you know, he has some lower hands he can consider buffing with. How is he playing those straight draws and stuff like that? So, I mean, kind of loose from Fade are all over the place. And then Limitless playing in a way where he's not considering calling with some hands that might need to consider calling. You don't want to play against players like Fedor in this way. You want to really think about calling and really think about your entire range. And um, when you have hands like Queens there, you need to sometimes probably call. I, I don't know if that hand does call or not, but it's at least something that you'd want to consider. Chat, I have a question about chat for you as we see Fedor flop trips here. So someone in chat just said, no smart person plays online battling regs for no reason. Now, I don't normally ban people because their, cha their chat is so weak that they say, like, kind of stupid things. Like, I think people should be allowed to say stupid things. But when they say something to that level of stupid, 
it kind of seems like a reasonable person to ban because they're just going to pull the whole chat down with them. So let's drop a one in the chat if you think this guy should be banned for saying one of the silliest things you could possibly say in chat. Drop a two in the chat if you like this guy and you think he's sweet. We see a check call, I believe, on the flop from the 6-7. That seems a little unusual. Or no, check raise, sorry. All right, so... Wait, check raise on the flop here? Check raise from the 7-6 on the flop. Quite loose, and now he's going for the turn over bet. About one and a half times the pot. I'm trying to think, can you think of worse hands to check raise? Nothing is springing to mind. Maybe like... 10-2. <laughs> but if 10-2 had a spade or a diamond, I'd like it better. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. So, um... Also, you're not defending 10-2 off pre. So you have suited. So yeah, if you had 10 deuce of clubs... I would like this less. And could he be zigging at the wrong time? This is just... Am I? What am I watching, Mike? Can uh, you explain this to me? This is, is this, You know what? I think he's tilted about the call-out. I think he's tilted about the call-out and putting. By the way, this is a mandatory jam river if you check raise the flop. I think poker on the internet is you, happening. You, you don't have a diamond. You don't have a spade. This is just... This is. There's not... I mean, this is a river jam. It's not even remotely close. There's, it's just a pure stick it in the river. I mean, he played this hand like a fish, though, to get here. Um, but yeah, pure pure jam, obviously. And, um, yeah, I mean, he's going to get stacked. Unless he nets it up. He's going to get stacked here. This is, this is just, this is, th there's just no... And then Fedor is slow rolling? I oh, know, okay. What a bad play. Yeah, some ambitious stuff there. By the way, shout out to uh, Mike McDonald in the chat, gifting 10 tier 1 subs. Appreciate it, Mike. Thanks for tuning in. If any of you want to be notified when we go live for this kind of a thing, Hit that follow or subscribe button, depending on what platform you're on. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow oh. on Twitch. You'll get notified when we go live. And if you want to subscribe on YouTube or on uh, Twitch as well, get some get some emojis and some other stuff. Maybe uh, hit that sub button over there. I really like how Limitless played the river there. That was nice. Yeah, he. I mean, two out of what? Two out of five street. Two out of four streets. He played well, right? Oh uh, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. It's not bad. Turns probably a low frequency bet. Uh, it, it's it's weird. It's weird once you have hands you should never have. Um, the it, it is it is tough though when it is tough when you're playing a game and you need to make so many decisions and and you're you're just going to miss a lot of them. It's tough. So I I kind of get that. Um, you know he's going to make mistakes, but some just some really. Just some really bad play um, from Limitless and that one on the, on the flop and turn, especially the flop. What is he thinking on the flop? And then River Bluff from uh, Fedor looks nice here. Fedor King does eight, take that you, one down. You might, you might want to think about... The thing that's weird to me is that he's just snap folding a lot of these spots. And I, maybe that's just, you know, where, I, where, I, where I'm from, Mike. In the, in the, in, when I played poker back in my day... We looked a man in his eyes, and we said, "I don't think you got the good." Actually, you have the nuts straight. I'm folding the second nuts. That's that's how I play poker. Uh, but anyway, no, seriously though, I think um, I think that I'm surprised to see not see some. I think good heads up players when they face river bets, they think they might fold. They think about it. Where am I in my range? What's my opponent doing? Is it close? Am I in the cusp? I need to RNG this. But we're just seeing snap fold move on, and uh, I don't like that style. Mike, I like a style where we try and, you know, win the non-showdown. And right now I feel that obviously he's getting a bit unlucky and that he's pulling to the bluffs and bluffing into the, the, you know, really strong hands. But I'd like to see Limitless trying to win some more money in non-showdown. And I would like to see him put a little more thought into some of these river decisions. Shout out to Michael Quinn in the YouTube chat. I missed you too, bro. Yeah, I wonder if there's any element for Victor. 
I know a lot of six max players, which I, I believe. But host, have, not to cut you off, Fedor, but or not to cut you off, Mike. But this this is not getting through on Fedor at at all. What is this? Was this was this uh? What was this line? Yeah, let me. Do, I let like me, let me double. I like trapping here. Fader's hand here. By the way, this is a nice hand to trap with. But what is this line? It was just C bet on the flop from Victor, and then check back turn, and now he's going for the over bet on the river. Okay, I mean, what is this flop bet? Is is hold on? Is this is this staged? You know what? I didn't think about this. Is this is there a possibility that this match is staged? Because this is just such bad play, I can't imagine. What is this? What am I looking at? Explain what my eyes. And then jam. Over. Yeah, jam's fine. Actually, jam's fine, yeah. What is this play from Victor? What is that? Can you... I mean, it, it, it makes no sense on any level. He doesn't have a diamond. Um, it's not a spot you want to overbet. It's... Is this staged, Mike? The whole challenge? You think even, like, the hands are staged? Well, did you look at the hand that we just saw? Yeah, I mean... It, we, this, we... This, is, this is horrible, horrible poker. Horrible poker horrible it's just horrible there's no i i i it's it's embarrassing that one glass of wine must have hit hard two cigars as well i believe this oh the cigars definitely are de what what am i i thought we were gonna see some 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 you know some pretty good poker here today i mean maybe there's an element of like they're one tabling they're just, they're drinking. They're just, like, doing whatever. Like, he's not going to take a... Ch like, he, maybe L Limitless has just decided, I'm not going to take my checkbacks today. I'm just going to put in the C-bet, even if I have jack-4 on ace-9-8, two spades or whatever with no spade, or Mike, even if I have 5-4. I, I, I feel like, Mike, if I just coached you how to play heads-up no limit, I feel like you could beat either of these guys. What are you, what are you doing lately? I don't think I have time for that, man. How about, how about the, Mike, the Mike Brady versus Limitless challenge? Because I mean, are you looking at this? You could get in there. It sounds like a racket, to be honest, man. And I would have such a small piece of myself, like it's not even worth it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I had the fire on that one. <laughs> to be totally fair, I think people that don't know how to play heads up, they, these guys would beat. Um, Fedor has played pretty well overall today, I would say. Bit loose, bit spewy, kind of what I expected. And then, um, man. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to say, Mike. There's no way to there's no way to sugarcoat this one. We have a check down there's, pot here. And we have There's no way to sugarcoat this one. It's tough to sugarcoat sometimes. When you see a bad sea bed, it's a bad sea bed. What 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 is this hand? Check, 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 check. Aces raised. Is this staged, Mike? Well, you would think if it was staged he wants bigger pots, so I I, I don't well, know. We've had that. some bigger pots. <laughs> that is true. This chat. was a fucking publicity stunt. Chat is equally as... And, and we, we fell for it. I was just going to say, we fell for it. For it. It's like, we're I like... For it, Mike. We're like, heads up action. Let's fire the stream up. We're all excited. We got the we got the whole community excited. We got over f nearly 5,000 people watching this on YouTube and Twitch. And now... We're starting to, to catch on that maybe this was all a trick. We're not going to fall for it again, GG. We know you're gonna try what? again. We know you're gonna try again with more heads up challenges. We're not falling for it unless we unless we want to. Then maybe we will. What 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 is? It's just all right. <laughs> well, well, we got We're gonna have to monitor this. We're gonna have to monitor and make sure that people are trying to win. Okay, so Fader bets the turn here with nine eight, and then Block bets the river. Totally fine. Worth considering checking. When you have a nine, you block some of the hands that are gonna call. Um, when you probe barrel. Um, actually, I'm not sure if this was flop check call or probe barrel, but I, either way, um, I think that it's a hand that you might want to consider um, a check with. But it's not my favorite check because. Um, and then this raise was this probe barrel. Uh, yeah, probe barrel exactly. I think that was fine, actually. From I think that's a reasonable bluff candidate. Better to have a queen or a jack, but pairing the six is kind of okay if it's low frequency. Um, I think that was kind of okay. No, it's better to have a it's better to have a queen or a jack there. The jack. The jack is the card you really want because you bought queen jack and jack eight. Um, so jack six, jack ten are the bluff candidates. 
A6 is a bit spewy and loose. Um, we now have uh, open call, 665, trips for Victor, does check raise, turn completes the flush. This is a spot you're probably going to want to block bet a lot. Um, you could use a spot, a strat with some two thirds, but I think uh, block's good. He does go for the block. Block of horses means like a smaller bet size for those people that are not familiar with the terms. Um, now we're to Fedor with Jack-5. He just has a mandatory call. You could consider a raise, actually. Is this an okay... This is actually kind of an okay bluff candidate, but I think you, you, you want to call. Um, and then if Victor bets the river, this is not even fucking close. We have a jam for Fedor. Not even close. 6x is going to have to call. And then... I actually played this exact hand versus Negrande, basically. Very yeah. similar hand. Was, was, where it, the, I had, was it the 4-3? Yeah, the 4-3, where yeah. I basically had what is what is essentially similar to Jack-5 here, and the solver pure jammed my hand. Um, he's not He is opening Jack-5 offsuit, so you can't pure jam. And then check on the river from... I would have expected... This is weird to check this one, but um, there was a Jack-70 check raise turn barrel river. This one, I think, is a more solid hand to value bet than that one was. So I would have expected to see at least block here, maybe even two-thirds pot um, from Victor. But does that go for the trap? And now Fedor is considering uh, bluff? What's he considering? He's going to check. Uh, I do have some good news with regards to how Limitless is playing. What that, is happening? Do you, do you remember What that? is happening? Hold this, on, this, Mike. This check is okay. insane. Okay. It's good. We're good. It's all good. Uh, Continue. Sorry. Remember, remember when you got really upset about the 5-4 C-bet a while back? Uh, it was like Jack 8. It, I don't remember, but it was like Jack 10-7 or something, and he C-bet 5-4, no diamond, oh, yeah. two diamonds. Uh -huh. He did not C-bet the flop. We got tricked by the pot size again. So it was just uh. it was just delay C-bet at river. Oh, better. I think it, it works out for you guys, though, because even though you got to see what actually happened, so you knew Doug was wrong, and it's, it might be fun to see Doug wrong, right? Then also, you get to see Doug like blow up and stuff, even though the thing that triggered it isn't even real. So, kind of, it's kind of a, a win for everyone, except for maybe Doug. Yeah, except for Doug. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still don't like it as delay barrel. You'd rather have a diamond, and I don't think that size is good. You don't have flushes there often, so I mean, um, what is this hand? Did he bet the turn here? Probe turn? Excuse me? Let me check. What is this? Probe barrel? Wow. Wow. The uh, the gloves are off here. We've got the old uh, air ball ski. At least he has a heart in his hand on the turn. Um, otherwise, it would be terrible. So, you know, he has that going for him. I mean, like, this... Th th I don't think... I don't think this could be for real money, Mike. These decisions are just horrific. This is this feels completely staged to me. Strong words from Dougie P, guys. You know, I was gonna say we're you know we're not gonna we're likely not gonna is be possible? covering. Is it possible they have something where GG's covering the losers' losses, so you're incentivized just to play spew and try and win as much as possible? So there's something weird here. Well, so let's think. So how much are they gonna lose on average from? Would they lose on average from that? Like twenty k a session, maybe would be the average. Or no, less even, because it's what ten say ten big blinds per one hundred is already a lot. That would be two k times four hundred per session. So eight k per session is like the average if that if it's a ten big blind per one hundred win rate. So they could easily have made a calculated decision to spend thirty two thousand dollars on average for something is something is wrong here, Mike. Because they're just playing too badly. I mean, this queen four suited defend. This is a, probably a fold on a hundred. No, it's 2.5x, though. It's probably close. Turbo snap call, though, of course. He probably makes his 4-bet as well. Bet flop float. And so 8k per session is eh, like... I guess that's close. I guess this one's... This is close. This should be a... This should be a give-up from Fedor. This hand's really bad to bluff, I think. You block backdoor heart floats that will fold. You block low pairs that will fold. Um, I think you want hands that block more of the boat. So a hand such as ten, uh, nine, seven of clubs would be a nice bluff hand here, or um, a jack ten kind of hand, jack ten with a club. Um, those are 
or club or diamond. Diamond hands make sense for bet twos. Clubs are good for bet threes. Um, but I mean, this is just. Are they trying? Is a question that we have to wonder. Are they trying, Mike? I mean, you're here. What do you think? I, I mean, if you hadn't been saying this to bias me, I would probably have said, have not suspected anything. I would have just suspected that it's two players who haven't done a ton of, you know, heads up studying. And thus. That's not true. Limitless has played a bajillion heads up hands in the last two years. Yeah, see, I didn't even know that. So. He's played everyone for infinite hands. He only plays heads up. This is what he does. This is his. This is this is all he does. And he plays a little six max tournaments too, but this is his main thing. It's like saying, "Yeah, this professional. He's not really a professional. He's actually an amateur. He doesn't. He does other things." It'd be like watching an MMA fight, and they walk into the ring, and the guy doesn't look like he's been in shape. He's like, "Well, he's not an MMA fighter." <laughs> it's like, well, yes, he is. That's what he's doing. That's all he does. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't get it. How can someone be this bad? It's 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 baffling. I'm I I'm gonna go I'm gonna give him some credit though and assume something weird's going on behind the scenes. Not that he's actually this bad, because that makes more sense to me. What's more likely that someone is this bad and this is all that they do, or that there's something weird going on behind the scenes? What makes more sense to you? I mean, we've been watching two hours of poker and I can't even count how many mistakes that we've seen. It's been just it's just been a it's just been an endless stream. And they're not even tanking tough spots. They're just insta-snapping stuff. I Either this is staged, or I didn't realize how low the bar is for heads up right now. It, it, it's one or the other. There's no other way around this. I'm leaning towards staged. I think staged. Because that 7-6 punt off into Queen Jack, that was so fucking bad. What was that? This is this is stuff you learn on day one. Don't check raise complete air balls with no flush draw suit blockers on just it's he check raised six seven of nothing on Jack Jack three and just ran it for all of the money. This is day one heads up stuff. You know this is stuff that Mike, if I taught you how to play heads up no limit and I did back in the day. In fact, I think you already know that from what I taught you eight years ago. This is day one heads up no limit stuff. Well, yeah, I, cer I certainly wouldn't have, che wouldn't have check raised the seven six. Certainly not. That said, maybe he's drunk well, and just kind of fucking around. I don't know. All right, what happened to this hand? It looks like it went open to bet call, bet call. I assume that's the action. Standard from both. Fader should mainly barrel turn. Does barrel. He should size to jam river. Looks appropriate. And then Fader should barrel this off. Yeah. Okay. This is a standard triple hand, unless the river is. Yeah. I mean, this is staged, dude. He just hold an ace in the turn. This is. This is. I, I. I think we should just stop streaming. This is just staged. They're just trying to do stupid stuff to. Yeah. I. I actually feel bad that we did this to our audience. I think we should. That's... I think we should cancel the stream. I, I don't I, I'm I'm sorry to like the fans and stuff, but this is this is obviously staged. I mean I, I don't I don't do you want to keep doing this? This is just staged. He just folded top pair in the turn to a barrel. Like this is this is not even close. Yeah, I mean, wh so what do you think is happening? Maybe maybe Victor. I, I, I look. I don't know what's happening. I don't know why, but I'm telling you, this is just this is just staged. So if you, I mean, I don't want to keep. It feels bad to even cover it. Yeah, I mean, it's one table anyway. And I mean, I we've already given the guys a good, what, and gals, sorry, two hours or so of content, of, of you know, nice free heads up content. Ooh, our Mikey with a decent point. Surely there would be massive lawsuits for staging a match that they're allowing people to bet on. That That actually is a decent point. There's no way that that ace time turn fold. I I I can't. I I feel I'm being 
tested right now, Mike, because no heads up, no limit reg would full top pair to a turn barrel on a dry board. It can't. I, 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 no, that's just not possible. Well, this has it, to be rigged. This if, has to be rigged. If it makes There's you, not, it, 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 let me let me stop for a sec. If it, if it makes you feel any better, we have a lot of people saying in chat that they're here for us, not for the poker match. So if that makes you feel better about what we've done to our audience, you know it's fine. We didn't we didn't we didn't. Uh, they still got some nice tidbits of heads up, even if it was commentary over hands that may or may not be something fishy behind them. This feels bad to me too because I would see the idiots saying that my match was staged and then you respond and say how could it possibly be staged we're playing high stakes for a lot of money and we're playing all these hands for months how could this possibly ever be staged and then you just see this shit and you think oh maybe that's why people think this stuff because this this is just clearly not this i mean these are not things that people would do so it's just not it's not close it's not even close he just folded top pair to a turn barrel what yeah it makes on no ace sense. king deuce five you fold ace nine to a two-thirds pot turn barrel i just can't they're just trying to to get hands this is this is there's this is not about the hands it's about how many faces are on the screen at once and which to, to remind y'all it's uh, a total of eight if you include doug and i and their avatars we Those... have almost a full ring table worth of people's faces yeah i mean eight max tournament we're set to go although three yeah, drink... of... yeah. although three of the tables are limitless and three of the table or three of the players are limitless three of the table players are uh fedor but that's okay what do you guys think is happening chat do you think there's nothing going on behind the scenes here that's fishy do you think Victor's just sort of advertising bad play to try to get action in the future in a relatively cheap way, since, you know, these stakes aren't massive compared to what he normally plays. Do you think it's straight up sort of staged, the way Doug's saying it? What do, what do you guys think? It seems like we're going to cut the stream, though, at some point fairly soon. For those who do want to keep watching, of course, you can just go to ggpoker.tv, watch their stream. You're just going to miss out on Doug and I. We'll miss you, too, of course. But, you know, sometimes sometimes you got to make the hard choice in streaming. That's what I've learned in, in my long career. I just don't think that they could be this bad. Especially Victor. I don't think he could be this bad. So, it's one of two things. Either he is this bad. Um, or it's staged. And by staged, I mean whatever. They're, they're purposely... He's purposely playing badly for whatever reason. Maybe they're incentivized if they're losing to try and win it, right? So he, he plays in a non-optimal way to try and increase variance. Here we have an interesting hand. Open call, 10-8-7. Check, two-thirds pot is standard-ish size. It's fine with 10-9. And then jack three check raises, standard-ish size as well. Two-thirds pot. Call. Turn nine, two pair for Victor. Of course, he loses the straights, and Fader does have the straight. And here, I think Fader is mainly going to be inclined to bet. Uh, when you have the straight and the redraw, you want to build the pot. You can trap with Jack X without the spades. Um, you don't block pair uh, two pair and set hands that might call. So I think overall, this is a hand that really likes betting. So he does check over to Victor. <laughs> Now with two pair, I think this is a spot where you're going to want to almost certainly check. Um, you could bet with some sets here. And the idea being if you go very big, you might get your pawn off with some 6x. Um, so a semi, a semi buff of, of sorts. But checking is the prudent play. It does check. Uh, deuce on the river. And now uh, I think Fedor has a uh, pretty clear bet. You could mix low frequency check, though. I don't see that being terrible. When you have the three of spades, maybe you block some hands that might want to bluff. So maybe that makes betting slightly better. Um, but low frequency check seems good as well.
Well, let's see if Fedor does decide to put in the river bet. I'm going to tweet a poll because I want to see what people think. Is... He does go for the block sizing, about 2k. <laughs> is Lumis actually this bad, or is this match... Or is he losing on purpose? That's a good question, I think. The best way of phrasing it. Actually this bad... Or is it maybe is he playing bad on purpose? Not sure. Don't know. Excuse me. Losing losing on purpose, correct? Losing on purpose. Or maybe play, play, playing bad on purpose, but yeah, I mean e either way. Yeah. It's one and the same, I suppose. Um, losing on purpose. Or playing bad on purpose. Or is he playing badly? Yeah, let's see what let's see what people have to say because. Uh, it kind of feels well. We'll see what the people have to say. All right, let's let's keep pretending for a bit here that uh, it's a real match. Uh, open queen ten, three bet from Fader with ace king. Uh, Victor does call, and you might want to consider four betting some of the time with queen ten, but calling is certainly the the main line. Um, queen jack four rainbow. Uh, Fader has ace of hearts, king of diamonds, so both suits on board. It's a hand you're going to want to look towards mainly betting, uh, but it does decide matter what fly, size flop you use. This is a board where you could use a very big flop size. That was kind of the way that I played it. Um, but he does go for the small size. Uh, Victor, no care about timing tells here. Snap calls. Uh, Jack on the turn. Um, now Fedor has got a pretty solid check. I mean, maybe once in a while bet, being that he does have the king of diamonds. But uh, you don't really accomplish that by betting. So this is a spot where checking makes a lot of sense. Over to Victor, a couple ways he can play this. He can play this with a sort of condensed range where he plays single size here, um, probably something around half pot or so. Um, or he could play a two-thirds more polar strat. Uh, when he checks this hand back, I assume he's going to be playing a bit more of a two-thirds pot uh, strategy, but of course checking is fine. River King, now Fedor uh, has got a hand where I think he likes a block bet. I think one-third pot here is very nice size. And then I think Victor is, uh, you know, he actually has a really nice bluff candidate. Could be looking to raise. Mike, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, what can you really have much better to, in terms of blockers? I mean, you block the ace 10, you block the 10 9, and of course you block the pocket queens, queen jack, etc. I think king 10 might be a little more ideal to bluff versus uh, bet check bet. Really? That's, uh, not, that's not, I would think my original inclination would say that that's a strong enough hand to call but I, yeah i think that's that's reasonable does it, um, it does it ever do hands like that ever mix between calling as a bluff catcher and raising as a bluff does that happen usually it'll it'll go for call over that so it might be that it is pure call you you could be right um i'm just i'm just saying i think that would be another candidate that we would want to be considering whether we want to bluff with But yeah, no, you're you're on the right you're in the right vein for sure. Someone on Twitter said that they we're reminded well, in so many words that we're reminding them of the the puppets in the Muppet Show right now. You know the the puppet the puppets that well they're all puppets but the ones in the balcony that are complaining about the show. You know what I'm talking about? It's in your replies. You'll see them when you. Sorry, say that again, Mike. You know, in the in the Muppet Show, the those guys, those grumpy guys who are in like the balcony complaining about how bad the show yeah. is, yeah, at the theater, or <laughs> yeah, whatever? yeah, they're saying that that's us. <laughs> that's not that far off. No, I, Except... I I feel very in line with those people right now. I never have before. Those puppets, rather. We're not really uh, that old though, but yeah, it's could be us. Okay, here we have flop bet, uh, check call, uh, and then we have an overbound the turn. I like this play. I mean, I would say normally you want to use a little bit of a smaller size on the straight complaint turns, but being that it's only 4-3, Fedor doesn't have 4-3 off pre, um, it's a good spot for it. And typically you want hands with a club, but the lowest suited hands that have gutters there, like that size, um, well played hand for, for Victor there for sure. Got a somewhat interesting flop here relating to their hands. Fedor flopping the four high flush draw and the pair of sixes. Victor flopping that top pair. Check calls the flop, and Fedor turns the four high flush. Expect to see a check back from him here. The river could, could get somewhat interesting. But only somewhat. 
I remember back in the day, Doug, you really liked bluffing this spot. We're, we're talking like eight years ago or so. You really liked bluffing this spot with just an insanely wide range of hands as a victor. I remember you just basically said, like, just half pot every pair from the flop on, on these, on these like, four spade spots, basically. Um, no, that's not that's not true. We also did some overbetting. Ah, uh, of course. <laughs> we, we're not bluffing enough with that. Yeah, the, these spots historically have been great bluff spots. I I, um, I remember it, it being like like you you might even bluff a hand like what Victor has here with the flop top pair you just turn it into a bluff like I remember it being just super super loose with with picking the bluffs I I'm not yeah, sure if I it think... was an exploitative thing but yeah it was it seemed to work well yeah I don't know if it was that exactly but those spots historically have been pretty good to bluff I I don't know if it's um. That's a little bit weird. It depends on how you structure the turn bet range, but it's certainly certainly appetizing. I think that check. I think that both their lines there made some sense. Um, open call five four versus two point five x. Kind of loose. His hands should maybe mix in some folds pre. But uh, you know, kind of loose. Turn four uh, flop check back by fader. Fine. Turn four, should she check from Victor? We do. Now over to Fedor. What does he want to do? Shots fired from the chat. Doug, could it be possible that Limitless is just more studied than you because ace nine, ace ten with one diamond is a fold specifically in my sims? That that ace, ace fold on the turn about 20 minutes or so ago. Ace king mm. x board, he had the ace nine. Mm. I'm gonna. Totally. I'm gonna assume your Sims disagree. Uh, I mean, I, I've not, I've not run that one, um, but I've not seen too many Sims where the top pair fold, top pairs folding the turn. So, uh, you know, I would, I would disagree. I also think it's a very, it's just a weird fold, man. It's just a weird fold because your hand is so strong. So. I don't know what ranges they're running and what sizes they're running, right. and there's so there's so many constraints in a sim, so right. it's hard for me to say for sure. But I can say that it is uh, very likely bad to fold top pair on the turn there. Yeah, that's one weird thing with the, with this like sim world that we're in is like people just run people can just run yeah. their own sims and they can get results and through no fault of their own, they're like they they won't be in line with other people's sims and and it's kind of a little it could be ambiguous, you know what what's correct yeah. i mean who who knows what what this this chatter which i appreciate your contribution but who knows what preflop ranges he put in there who knows how good they are you know all the different constraints it, it just it makes it difficult to to you know have a, a true true answer unless you're really really good at, at running sims you know yeah and you you don't know what um you know you don't know what the strategy that they're using either is but it's not just that hand i mean that hand is wild it's a, it's a lot of these other hands too that are just, just bad, you know? So, I mean, I, I don't, you know, may, maybe is it possible top pair makes us hold there? Uh, it seems unlikely to me, uh, but maybe it's, po I just can't imagine because you're going to be folding King X there, you know, and some King X is probably going to have to call. So how can you be folding aces? Just, it just seems, that seems extremely counterintuitive to me. All right, I'm going to fire up here. You, you hold down the fort. One sec. Doug might be firing up a sim, ladies and gents. Live sims. If you thought it couldn't get any better, and uh, by better, I mean better if you're a poker nerd specifically. You were wrong. All right, here we have a 4K pot, 3-bet pot with Victor as the 3-better. He's going to go for an over-bet on the flop with his straight flush draw. Fedor with the threes with a diamond. Probably can't continue against that overbet, but we'll see. For those who want an update on Doug's poll, who don't have Twitter, 30% say Limitless is actually this bad, 40% as Fedor folds, 40% says that they're not sure, and 30% says playing badly on purpose. So pretty damn even between the two, the two options. UG33, shout out to you. Thanks for tuning in, man. Single raise pot here. Fedor as the caller. Victor's going to put in another loose C-bet. This is one of the plays that Doug's been 
Critical up today. I'm not sure about this one specifically, but A3 doesn't have much going on on this flop, and it doesn't seem like a particularly high frequency flop to me. So I would expect 8-3 eight, eight, to not be in that C-bet range, but I could be missing something. It could be a C-bet for some reason. Sometimes solvers do somewhat unintuitive things. Josh Heinzel, shout out to you, man. Says it's not just the ace nine hand, though. There's also the seven six and others. For sure, for sure. That's definitely uh it's it's the sum of all parts that makes it suspect, right? It's not just the ace nine hand that, that's making us raise our raise our eyebrow. We're we're also seeing all these other weird hands that, you know, when they're all combined, it just gets a little bit weird. As we see Fedor put in this block size on the river, he's more than likely gonna get a fold here from Limitless, unless he wants to take his three blocker to the moon here. Not really a relevant blocker, considering Fedor doesn't float the flop with 3-4. Ooh, he does decide to raise, though. Very ambitious. Does get called. Nice call from Fedor there with the king. 7-11 was an inside job. Great name. I've missed uh, I'm misreading that one. It says, what do you think of that flop over bet spot? I mean, it seems it seems okay. I'll, I would have to ask Doug about uh, that specific board. I think it was like, what, Jack 5-4, two diamonds? I'm not super studied on what boards get what sizes exactly. I can sort of identify, you know, roughly this seems like a big bet board, seems like a small bet board, stuff like that. That one seems like it could be an over bet board to me. Could be fine to over bet at least. I mean, I, this is something I repeated a lot during the Doug vs. Daniel streams, but a lot of times multiple strategies can be good as long as they're accompanied by the... Uh, multiple sizing strategies can be good, roughly equal even, as long as they're accompanied by the right ranges, right? If you, you, you In a certain spot, for example, maybe a 25% bet can be good, but a 50% bet can be good too. You just have to adjust the betting range with which you choose that size. Um, so hard to say. I have to imagine overpotting on a somewhat wet board like the Jack 5 4 with a straight flush draw seems reasonable. I mean, it's like the perfect hand selection for it, sort of. Okay, I'm back. Were you in the, uh, I... the, the Sim Cave? Yeah, I've not turned that computer on since the challenge ended, and it, and it got stuck in a Windows update, so. <laughs> All right, you know, well, here little, we are, but we'll, we'll, we're gonna, of, we're gonna... little bit of a delay. <laughs> we're going to get to the bottom of this. I missed how this one played out. It, it ballooned out of nowhere here. I believe it was a C bet on the flop from Fedor who got called, and then maybe an over bet on the turn from Fedor? It was 2,400 in the pot on the turn. Yeah, I think this hand is going to be a... I mean, it depends on the size of stuff. But at least mix some call turn. Could be a reasonable turn check race candidate. Uh, as played, I think Fader has to check the river. If 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 the line you're saying is correct, he went. If he went, yeah, he bet he, over bet. Yeah. yeah, he one and a half x pot the turn. What's that stuff on Doug's walls? That's padding for uh, for streaming and recording content. It makes the uh, sound a little better. Fedor does not take Doug's advice. He goes for the seventy two hundred dollar bet. Going for some thin value, trying to get that call from a 9 or maybe pocket 8, something like that. Bonka7 says, Doug, will you make a new heads-up course after all this new info you learned during your challenge? Uh, I'll cover this one for Doug. He is not planning to make a new heads-up course, but he is going to be making content from the heads-up challenge for the Upswing Lab. So if you want to improve your poker skills in general, your No Limit Hold'em skills in general, check out the Upswing Lab. It's sort of an all-things No Limit Hold'em course. Subscription-based, it covers tournaments, cash games, online and live. Um, it's gonna, it already covers heads up a bit. It's gonna cover it a fair bit more. There's ranges for all of these games that I talked about. Solver-generated ranges, hand tweaked by Freed Molders. My name is Carl on Stars, a great 500 NL Zoom player. So definitely check out the lab if any of that sounds interesting to you. And if you want a preview of Doug's sort of content to come, or, or at least one type of the content to come. If you go over to Upswing Poker, go under the free resources tab, and then click Heads Up Challenge Insights, 
you can sign up for a free video that Doug made. It's like a 40 minute long video of him going up, maybe even longer, actually, like an hour long video of him going over the first session he played versus Negranu and really talking about a lot of never before seen showdowns, uh, talks about how he thinks Daniel played, uh, a bunch of insights that, that you can't really get anywhere else. So definitely go sign up for that on Upswing Poker. Again, you just go under the free resources tab on Upswing. And then you'll see Heads Up Challenge Insights. If you're already an Upswing member in any capacity, if you've ever downloaded a free product, if you've ever signed up for anything, all you have to do is log in and you will see a green button that says Heads Up Challenge Insights. So go check it out. And if you have any questions, uh, I don't want to dwell on this, but if you tweet at me at mbradycf um, or email me, mike at upswingpoker.com, I will answer any questions about any of this stuff. If you're wondering if the lab is for you, or if you want a recommendation for other courses, yeah, hit me up. One sec here. I'm yeah, no problem. Here we have Fedor, check stuff. Fedor checking back the flop with his pair of eights. Seems like a, a hand you'd want to see bet fairly often there. Benefits quite a bit from getting value and from protection. Marowitchie, uh, I see your question. It, that's the kind of thing, if you could shoot that over to me on Twitter or or email, uh, I'll, I'll give you a longer answer. I don't want to, you know, give this very personalized answer for you when thousands of people are watching, right? So, yeah. Cute Crocodile says, are, get, are getting all the courses on Upswing Poker are constantly updated? Uh, only the subscription products are updated regularly sometimes the the advanced courses get updated but what we generally do instead is we just release a new one so if you know every two or three years we release a cash game course every two or three years we release a tournament course just sort of updating it in that way and that allows the coaches to have incentive to make it because otherwise we wouldn't be able to get all those amazing coaches that we've gotten over the years and now you guys are looking at daniel legrano so i'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for a moment and put the dug hand back up why not So they're on break now, Doug. I think this would be a reasonable point to call it if you want after you uh, you run that hand. Give me a sec here. Let's 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 keep her going for the time being. Yeah, sounds good. No problem. Pure call, bitches. Oh, you heard it here. Maybe not first, like second or third, because chat was getting in there too. But pure call pure... that that ace nine boys and girls. I, I, there's a bitches at the end, Mike. You've got the bitches. That that's yeah. that's your I'm I'm ba I'm good cop, you're bad cop with the chat. So pure call. Which Folding. makes which makes sense because I mean it's it's top pair. Let let me see if I can go back so you guys can you know sort of see the hand we're talking about here. How long ago was it? Okay, so I ran this sim down to only 0 0.5, but I mean, it's holding 0, so it's... Um, calling makes three and a half big blinds on the turn. Folding is obviously 0, so it's a minus three and a half big blind turn fold. I mean, it's obvious because... Oh, wait, sorry, wait, yeah, that's correct, yeah. It's obvious because it's um, top pair. Top pair in a three-bet and and, three uh, pot versus ju facing just two bets. <laughs> And then um, Solver likes Fader's line, but we, I mean we knew we knew Fader's line was good, so that was that sure. was fine. Um, and then let's look at this other stone punt. The seven six. Yeah, the seven six. I'm sure Solver's gonna love that one. Bear with me, guys. <laughs> I'm just looking for it. Well, this here's the some... here, here's the seven six hand. I'll bring that back up. So here's the. Oop, that's that's not the seven six hand. That's Doug. So here's... Yeah, I'll take a, a little bit longer to run because uh, it's a single race pot. But was the seven six hand before or after the ace nine hand? Before. Check check three. There are one twenty. Check check three, and he's check raising seventy five percent. Okay. Oh, the chat the chat wants me to show you an another hand as well. By the way, that that just happened while while we were away, or while yeah, you, give while me, you were away. Give me, 
Let me just start this sim. And then... Uh, what was the fault? But it was 30%. Yeah, 30%. And That's the check raise size was 67, we'll call it. All right, so here's the, here's the ace nine spot, guys. Sorry, sorry for the delay there. I really struggled to find that one. Um, so the way this one goes is Fedor three bets the jack ten of spades. Victor, hold on one second, Mike. I'm putting in this in. Hold on. Sorry, I'm just trying to. Yeah, you're um, trying to focus. I got you. I got you. Uh, this is 150, right? That's it's just so so bad. Okay. Stop. So this is the spot that Doug is uh, confused about, guys. Here, the, that's on your up on your screen now, I believe. Yeah. So it was just fade or three betting, c betting the flop, and then betting the turn for two thirds. You know, pretty. It, okay. It's, it's 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 a pair of aces. You know, he does block the 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 flush draws, but that's not that's a fairly negligible factor here when compared to the fact that you just have top pair and you know you block top pair you block aces you block ace king yeah so that top pair fold is uh bad and obviously bad and that's why i think that it's i wanted to just make sure that that was correct i mean i i it was probably a waste of time to do that but when someone says they ran the sim you want to make sure that there's an idiot and uh yeah they're an idiot okay what hand did you want to show me so mike while the while the six seven runs so um, go to, in the stream, can you go to, uh, there's no timestamps, that's pretty annoying. Or let, There sort of are. Minus, right now it's like minus 1150 on the stream. Uh, it's, is uh, it po Vi pocket threes and eight seven? Uh, no, it's Victor has eight three of spades. 1150. Okay, I see this, yeah. Yeah, so Victor C bets the flop here with the eight three. What do you think about that okay. already? If it's small size, it's going to be low freak, so it's fine. It was small. Okay, so that was one thing I was curious about. And then on the river in this hand, uh, Fedor puts in a river block, I believe, of like 500 into 1600 on an ace river, and then Victor raises. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's bad. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, he has his block. Oh, I mean, he's, he's bluffing the actual bottom of his range, so... I mean, he unblocks both flush draws. That's good. And he has a three. That's not even relevant. Right. Not relevant. So, yeah. I mean, it's just bad. It's obviously bad. I could run it, but I don't want to waste anyone's time. Yeah, I mean, is, um, is there ever... Yeah. Is, is there any element here of, like, maybe he is deciding to choose to bluff in a, in a way that's not optimized for hand selection, but more for frequency, where he's you know, just raising the bottom of his range and this is the bottom and it's, it doesn't, no. have, it doesn't have bad blockers. It just doesn't have good blockers. No, nobody, nobody who's playing at the highest stakes is that bad. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's something that like, you know, it, it no, makes, I mean, it just, makes sense just, to do if you're playing nobody... like low stakes. Cause, cause you may not have the, the hand selection knowledge yet, but yeah. Well, it'd be one thing if he was selecting hands that kind of made sense, but were just not perfect. That'd be, but he's, He's an entire class of hands low, lower than he should be, right? Right, yeah. So sure. so he's bluffing versus a bet with the actual bottom of his range. It does have a heart and diamond. That is good. Three is good. So those aspects are good. But it's still too loose. It's just too loose. It's it, you, you simply just get to fold A3 here. It's just not... You can just find better bluff candidates by a very good margin. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, there was another one while you were away. I'm trying to find it. But it's pretty simple. It was just um oh here it is. Okay, so six minus fifteen if you want to look at it, but I could just describe it to you because it's pretty basic. Um Victor three bets with eight seven of diamonds. Fedor calls with pocket threes, though Fedor's hand's not relevant, and then Victor C bets for forty one hundred into four K, so a very slight overbet on Jack five four two diamonds. So he has a straight flush draw and uh board is Jack five four. Do you like overbetting on this board at all? Um no. What types of boards do get the overbet in three bet pot? This is a this board doesn't make a lot of sense. So you could have a small overbetting range here. So I don't think it's it's inherently terrible. But uh and by the way, it's basically pot. You bet forty one hundred to four K, we're sure. calling it pot. I think typically on a board like this, you like the smaller bet sizes because 
a lot of hands have close spots versus one third pot, whereas versus pot, they have kind of easy decisions. And also the advantage to one third pot on a board like this is that you allow yourself um, a size that can value about hands like tens through sixes, um, and even kind of ace king with the small size, ace king, ace queen. And if you bet really small, you're going to get calls from a lot of worse hands than you know. Let you let yourself then value bet basically, um, as well as your five x and four x can for sure value bet for those sizes. So um, by potting it, you can't bet those hands, and so you're more polar. Um, he does have a strong draw, <laughs> strong draw. So if he wants to bet, then he could bet this and um, call jam. But you know, if he gets jammed on, he's going to be up against uh, better flush draws and Jack X, and maybe. I mean, it's going to be mainly those hands. So, you you do put some pressure on those hands like sixes. So maybe that's an advantage to this play. But um, I mean, it can't be that bad with this hand. Uh, I just don't really like the flop strategy on this board with that hand with this size. Okay, this hand should be run. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there was no way for us to know, but apparently it fooled 7-6, no heart, no spade, no diamond on Jack-Jack 3 versus a bet. Yeah, apparently it fooled that. Hmm. Crazy. Who knew that the nothing on the the, the Jack-Jack 3, the 7-high nothing burger, is a fold? I mean, I guess now that I'm thinking about it, maybe we're, we're just playing at such a pinnacle of, of heads and limit strategy that, um, you know... I wouldn't. Maybe I'm. I'm just getting too carried away. I what I'm expecting from sort of the the player pool, like knowing that the worst possible hands are folds. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's more of like a top three player in the world kind of thing, not a top ten. But uh, yeah, apparently you fold the worst hand of the flop versus a bet. Hmm. So the question remains: Is he purposefully losing or not? The, the question just remains. I, I I I just feel I feel you can make some passionate arguments. My mic was muted there for a minute. Sorry about that. But we have a very key and potentially correct prediction from the chat about what's going on here. Have you ever thought that maybe in the Eastern Hemisphere the Sims run backwards? Hmm. Could be that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, I think I think probably that, that could be it. Could be it. Could be it. Okay. All right. And you know, some people some people in the chat are upset, you know, kind of some slack, Doug. He's just trying to do his best. Yeah, this is a guy who's self proclaimed the best player in the world. I think I think that y you don't get a lot of slack when you call yourself the best at something. Well, you you get a you little slack because you're human, but you don't get arguments. clear, obvious errors all over the place type slack. Um, this isn't Phil Helmuth, where he just knows that he's not great and calls himself just middle of the pack and doesn't brag about his bracelets. You know, someone like that, you can let it slide. Maybe in the Eastern but, Hemisphere, uh, the Sims run back. This is someone saying that they're the best in the world at something. And, um, you know, then you just see clear errors. I mean... It looks like he's punting to Fedor, and Fedor is just got his net out. I think Fedor has played overall pretty well today. Maybe a little loose in some spots, but Fedor has actually played some pretty good poker today. Yeah, I mean, he's up four buy-ins as a result, so good for him. Already a, a deficit that's pretty tough to make up for Limitless in a one-tabling 1600 hand match. You know, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not super tough. Four buy-ins, you could certainly make it back in a few hundred hands, but... In such a small, with with such a small amount of runway for Ooh. him, it's tough. Interesting one. Three bet call, uh, nine four four, sixty percent. Or sorry, seventy percent. No, sixty percent flop size. Kind of interesting. Wow, what an action card in the turn. Bet call, turn is the ten of spades. So now both players have flush draws. Fedor has uh, open ender as well. I think that. Victor is going to be pretty inclined to barrel here. There shouldn't be many raises from Fedor, so he can bet kind of safely, knowing that his opponent will mainly call. And then Fedor should really be calling here. Uh, I don't think this is a hand that gains a lot from jamming. Um, Some combo draws might jam occasionally in some spots like this, but I don't think that Queen-Jack is one of them. I think you typically like to have hands more like 8-6 of a flush draw here, where if you jam, you get some of the higher card hands to fold. Um... 
I think here you're inclined to just call and take your equity across rivers. And typically speaking, you don't barrel, you don't jam turns much in these spots. And if this isn't the fade or holes special, I don't know what is. Um, back back door flush run out. He's look at him on his webcam. He's trying to not laugh. He's trying to say, okay, we got a serious spot. This is a serious situation. But inside, all he's thinking about is Russia and the Saint Petersburg building or whatever the Russian <laughs> version of. The Mirage would be. I don't. Th <laughs> <laughs> the, the Russian equivalent of the Mirage Casino in Vegas is. <laughs> I tried. That is fantastic. Yeah, I think Russia has casinos. I just don't know the name of any of them. Yeah. What's the, what's I the think... what's the name of a casino in Russia, guys? Hit us with that. Hit us with some knowledge in chat. Bet bet check fold very reasonable from Victor. By the way, you block a lot of the hands you want to have, so I think. Uh... Is, is is fine when you do bluff with a diamond there as victor if at all what would be the scenario where you're doing it uh not two diamonds never two. i think you could yeah well the lowest ones might be low freak so maybe you could argue that it gets in there a little bit um but you know it's a it's a good safe fast study and fast rule that flush draws just tend to suck as bet threes so um, the lowest ones are less like that because they block less flush draws. So let's say that we had three deuce of diamonds there. I think that one would like some tripling because you don't block the flush draws that call call fold. Um, in position, the small blind's not calling three bets with many 3x, deuce x suited hands. So you don't block that many of those. Uh, but typically the heart of the flush draw range will take non bet 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 lines either through um, checking at various points on flop and turn or through uh, getting up on the river. You just have better buff candidates. Yeah, that makes sense. Don't want to block their folds, usually. Three Very bet, true. Three bet from Fedor with the ace-10. Likely going to get the fold from Victor, but who the hell knows with what's going on today. Oh, he does I can't believe I, I can't believe I fired up this sim just to see if these idiot hands were bad. I feel... I, feel, I, I got trolled, Mike. Yeah, you got trolled decently well. I mean, to be fair, I think they sort of might have gotten trolled because they probably have this authority bias of they're like, oh, well, if Limitless does it, it has to be okay. Which is already, like, a fallacy. Like, even the best players make mistakes, so that's that's already kind of wrong. But it's understandable to have that bias. You know, you see someone who, you know, t says he's the greatest player, and a lot of people say that he's a great player. And, you know, he does, to be fair to him, he sits the highest stakes all the time. Um, so he, he's clearly, like, you know good i guess i relatively good it's just yeah i mean it's tough it's tough to be unbiased when you see him make a play and then you're like well now i have to rush to defend it because yeah because how can he be wrong four three officer not an open by the way um but you know what would i expect from the best player in the world other than to butcher pre-flop opens so i mean that makes sense and then fedor calls with king three um, versus 2.5x, uh, that's going to be uh, continue. So standard, and then you're going to probably mix three bet, but call, check, fold, fine. Do you have a spade? Spade, having a spade and versus 3% pot, that's going to float. So maybe a little bit tight from Fader there, but I didn't see the size. If it was a bit bigger, it's obviously standard. Um, Hunter Nine wants to know something. I, I asked you half this question earlier. Um, would Dnex beat both Limitless and Fedor? Earlier he said Fedor. Uh, I mean, Fedor would probably not be a favorite against Daniel if they just played today. Limitless. It's t I mean, it's tough to say because we don't really know what's going on here, right? Like, it's tough to really give an I answer. I mean, he doesn't know how to open the button. I mean, this is a man that's played probably millions of heads-up hands, and he doesn't know about button opens. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. There's no other explanation. I mean, Negrano wouldn't have made that mistake. So what am I supposed to say? Um, I mean, Fedor has played exceptionally well today for what I was expecting. And, um, you know, a few thinner mistakes. But something's up with, with Victor. He's either 
yeah. I mean, if Victor played like this for sure in Agrano, I would, I would, I would assume though that this is not how he actually plays. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Open call. Pocket tens for Fedor. Uh, Ace deuce for Victor. A seven three. Check. We should see small size from Fedor mainly here, but mixed check. Hands like eight signs, tens better a little more often. Kings, queens, jacks check a little bit more often. It's usually the way that the scales on this. Um, easy check call for Victor. No reason to raise. Uh, eight in the turn. Check to Fedor. Fedor depends on what strategy he wants to go here. If he uses smaller bets, he could mix this into a bet, but mainly check. If he uses bigger bets on this turn, which I think is probably preferred, then this will be a pure check on the turn. Fedor is going to go for the turn bet here. Forgive me if Doug already called that. I, I thought maybe it just happened. Does get called by Victor. And it goes check, check on the river. Certainly would not expect Fedor to bet the river there. That would be yeah, outrage definitely. outrageously thin. I didn't see turn size, actually, but tur turn's already kind of thin. Right, yeah. We're going to see a check call from Fedor here, most likely, with his flopped kings up. Victor's yeah, up. and I think I think Victor is going to be pretty inclined to bet the turn. He has a club. Um, he's got some good equity. Uh, Two-thirds pot size is probably preferred here, which is what he uses. So, um, yeah, this, this hand seems pretty reasonable. And then over to Fedor, he just has to call. There's really no question. Um, top pairs call turn is something that we learned today on the stream. I think that turn size from Fedor, by the way, was like 1100 into 1600 with the with the tens a couple hands ago. So like or okay. last hand, three quarters or so. Yeah, I don't I don't love that. Seems a bit too big. I think I think it, it might still happen low frequency though, but um, I think it's probably check. Fedor up a cool 93k today. Pretty good. Yeah, and uh, overall, he's uh, he's earned it. He's he's been the better player today in the small hands. I mean, obviously, he's run amazing in some spots, but uh, his play has been his play has been pretty good. I, I've not seen I've seen a couple kind of loose plays, but nothing nothing that wild. Uh, overall, solid solid play for sure. Doctor Penguino asks in chat, "What was the sim result?" All of the sim results were what Doug expected. The seven, you, uh, Apparently, you do not check-raise 7-6 with no diamond on jack-jack 3-2 diamonds. Who could have guessed that? You do not fold ace-9 to a double barrel in a 3-bet pot in position on ace-king brick-brick. Uh, though Even when you block the flush draw with one, one of your cards. And uh, I think those were the only sims that were ran, right? Yeah, those were the only... I mean, the, the bad plays were bad, is the cliff notes. Uh, it's just yeah. so interesting, like to to because if you if it's staged, you'd think you know they're doing it for like action, so then you would not expect the ace nine fold. But then, if he's trying to lose, it could uh, trying to lose is kind of the only thing that has the thread that that sort of is consistent across all of the all the explanations other than something weird that we're not thinking of like he's just quite drunk and really fucking around like purposeful well i guess that still is the same thing like purposefully playing bad essentially because i just can't imagine he doesn't know to call ace nine on the turn i mean i'm sure people who have watched more of limitless can can say for sure that he's made he makes those turn calls i mean if there's a bunch of for those who don't know you could just like youtube search a player's screen name and you'll find a bunch of youtube videos of them playing so yeah, you could uh, you could always go watch these players play by just you know searching for their screen name. Absolutely. All right. Well, Mike, I've had enough of this shit show. I'm gonna do some other things today. So uh, why don't we call it a wrap, and uh, we can throw everyone back over to the GG stream. If yes. they want to watch this facade or whatever the hell it is, they can they can watch over there. Yeah, sounds good. So 
Thank you guys for tuning in. We're, we were thinking about maybe covering this one day next week, but I don't think we are. Um, so maybe, you know, hit the follow button, hit the subscribe button to stay tuned for future stuff we do. Maybe we'll cover some tournaments and stuff. Also on the YouTube uh, for Upswing Poker, so uh, youtube.com slash Upswing Poker. Subscribe to that too, as Doug does the cat on our way out. Um, check out the Upswing Lab if you want to get good at No Limit Hold'em. And if you want to keep watching this stream, keep watching these guys do battle with Joe Ingram as your commentator head over to ggpoker.tv and you can continue to watch the action thank you very much for tuning in appreciate you spending your friday morning or maybe early evening depending on where you are with us take care peace